everyone loves to be by a lake in the summertime. Well, this is Motorsports Lake. It is Elkhart Lake in Wisconsin, about an hour and a half north of Milwaukee. And it is famous for this place, Road America. One of the most spectacular racetracks you can see anywhere in the world. And this famed venue is celebrating its 65th anniversary season and something special for this doubleheader weekend as well. It's the first time in this 2020 NTT IndyCar season that fans have been allowed to be here. As we welcome you to IndyCar Live, presented by Liberty Mutual. What a place this is. Set on some 640 acres, it is just spectacular. And it feels good to be back out on the grid. Hi folks, Lee Diffie along with championship winning drivers Townsend Bell and Paul Tracy. We are set to go. If you weren't with us yesterday, this isn't the first race of the weekend. Two races this weekend and a lot of work to be done. 55 laps around this four mile track, 220 miles done already. 220 to go. You're used to endurance racing in sports cars. Is it a little bit like that for these drivers? I think it's a lot like that. They've got the closing stint, if you will, today, but every driver in this field would have a very disciplined routine from last night getting ready to today. The electrolytes, hydration, some ibuprofen probably, maybe an ice bath. None of that matters because the best thing to fix your body and your mind is adrenaline. They'll have plenty of that as they go barreling down to turn one at over 190 miles an hour. Paul, yesterday's opening race was spectacular to say the least. But some guys had some adversity. Is today almost like a do-over? What can we expect? Well, I'm expecting a super exciting race. What I see happening right now is a start of a changing of the guard. We've got a lot of new young drivers that are in their early 20s, teens, that are pushing and shoving around the veterans. And the front three guys today are all under 23 years old. So it's going to be a wild start. We know how odd 2020 has been and the variables continue just like the NTT IndyCar Series schedule. Let's have a look at the amendments because set to be 17 races, it's now 14. There were some cancelled, but this is the first of three double headers. Next weekend in Iowa will be the next one and then at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca. No Indy 500 in the month of May. It's been pushed to August 23 and there's a lot to look forward to and the season will wrap up on the streets of St. Petersburg in Florida. Florida. But one driver who is not complaining about this change schedule or how he has started it is Scott Dixon. It has been 258 days since the stars of IndyCar last race. Uh, Dixon yeah. in the orange and blue PNC bank car goes around the outside of his teammate. You're will clear. it hold? You're will clear. it stick? Yes, it will. And he is the Dixon likes that high line and goes I'll to the front. Three back here. Scott Dixon wins in Texas to kick the season off. Dixon starts the 2020 season on a high. Scott Dixon has finished runner-up here the last three years in succession. And if you think that bothers him, you are correct. Dixon has grabbed the lead and taken off. Second no more, Scott Dixon wins the GMR Grand Prix at Indianapolis. Well done, Scott. And this is just the beginning. Ready to go at Road America, into turn six. Oh, oh, now he's fighting for the lead. The number 12, he's spinning from up on the jack. And Scott Dixon got out well in front of Will Cowell. Scott Dixon wins three in a row to start the 2020 NTT IndyCar season. Unbelievable. You'll often hear us say that Scott Dixon is living in rarefied air as far as IndyCar Series history. Look at who he's positioned between with five titles. AJ Foyt on one side and seven, Mario Andretti on the other, along with Sebastian Bourdais and his dear friend Dario Franchitti. So his quest for a sixth title, Dave Burns, has started very, very well. And Lee, it's been 14 years since the driver started the season with four wins in a row. Scott, you just saw those numbers there, the folks involved there. You like those? Yeah, those numbers are great. You know, it's uh, for us, you know, on the PNC Bank number nine, we're just, you know, treating each race as, as going for the win. And I think uh, if you can do that, the rest will, you know, take care of itself. But, you know, yesterday I think was definitely uh, pretty unexpected, I think, with how it played out. The undercut was, you know, huge. You know, one point there where the team came on and said, you know, you, you empower racing for the win. I was like, how is this possible? So <laughs> it, um, it's been a, an interesting weekend for us. We definitely got the car a lot better this morning. So we'll start sixth opposed to, you know, ninth yesterday. Uh, which was good and you know hopefully we can keep working on that. I know you don't need any more confidence but what would it do for you today to take home another victory and start four in a row this year? 
That's the goal, man. It's always the goal, you know. Uh, for us, we're in the business of winning, and we've got to keep, you know, trying to do that. It's been a great start, you know, great start so far, but we can't, we can't really dwell on that, you know. So we'll keep our head down. We'll keep working hard. I also, want to give a shout out to my dad back home. He's been in hospital for five weeks, and it's not doing so well. So uh, all the best to him, and hopefully get. Uh, travel when a travel allows I'll you know try and get back home so thank you that's right hope you can do that hope you can do that with another trophy Scott Dixon lines up six today Lee and we talk about that title chase Dave and going for sixth Paul and the reason why it is a big deal is because AJ Foyt the the all-time winning title winning IndyCar legend he got his sixth title 45 years ago Dixon wasn't even born Dixon hasn't even turned 40 yet do you think he can do it this year oh absolutely and it has been a pleasure to watch him so far this season, but it's been a nightmare for his competitors watching him absolutely trounce everybody. But we're witnessing right now a dynasty in the making with Scott Dixon Townsend. He has been so good this year, and it hasn't been super easy. He dominated the first race, but he's really had to fight these last two. He's had to fight, and I think what's remarkable about Scott Dixon is the decision-making under fire. At every possible juncture, it seems like this season in races, when Dixon had to make a big picture decision, he made the right one. That was the case yesterday. That's the reason he's a five-time champion and the reason he's on his way so far to his sixth championship this season. Well, somebody who has raced against Scott Dixon for many years and also admired him from the sidelines is our newest team member. That is James Hinchcliffe. We welcome Hinch to the NBC Sports team. And he's had a glittering career himself. It's not over. You're going to see him at the Indy 500 in the Genesis Honda. He's won six IndyCar Series events. He sat on the pole for the Indianapolis 500. He has done so much. He's been one of the sport's most popular drivers, voted by the fans, of course. And he also showed his diversity by going on Dancing with the Stars and acquitting himself very, very well. Hinch, we had fun with you yesterday on NBCSN. Now we're on the Peacock. Welcome to the team. What are your thoughts on yesterday and today? What are we going to see? Thanks so much. Well, first of all, if I wasn't wearing a mask, you'd be seeing me blush after that intro, Lee. But no, <laughs> this has been a great, great weekend so far here at Road America. It's great to have the fans back, and the action on track has been as hot as the tarmac here. We saw so many passes. We saw so many problems in pit lane yesterday. Today, it's going to be all about tires. We saw the undercut working well. We know it's tough to make passes, so restarts are going to be the key. You see Joseph Newgarden making a very rare error here, but Alex Pillow in the pink car behind Ryan Hunter Ray there, fourth in line. He had to pass the series champion as we watch Dalton Kellen go off there, not once, but twice in the grass here. Look at that awesome move. He had to do it once around the outside, once on the inside. So it's very difficult with how evenly spaced the grid is to get these passes done. Restarts are definitely one of the places we're going to see that happen. Also, we see that they can sometimes breed cautions. Now, one of the things that we're seeing is how young the grid is right now. You're looking at these six drivers. I mean, our front row today combined can't even go grab a spotted cow here in Wisconsin. It's so young. 20.5 the average age of the front row. You got three drivers, four or five drivers, sorry, in their 20s. And Rinas VK, 19 years old, who I think actually had the best pass of the day around the outside of the carousel on uh, reigning Indy 500 champion Simon Pagino. So it's great to see the history of the sport is in great hands with some of these young, fiery competitors, guys. Hinch, thanks so much. Yeah, there's a really nice blend of, of veterans, rookies, youngsters. That's what IndyCar is all about. And one team that boasts... A, uh, a couple of young drivers is Arrow McLaren SP. Uh, I've got one rookie and one young driver, and one of those young drivers in Pato Award happens to sit on the pole position today. And this is an exciting young driver. He was mixing it up yesterday. He really wants to do well in his first full season. He has done IndyCar racing before. He's an aggressive. He kind of reminds me of a young Elio Castro Neves with his personality, but with his on-track performance, this could be the biggest day of his career. Yeah, for sure. I think yesterday he really showed that he wasn't going to get muscled around by any of the veterans. It was elbows out. He was willing to commit and commit heavy to every corner for position and this morning in qualifying he was really able to commit Paul to the pace required to start up front. Yeah he had the benefit of going in the second group and it was a little bit quicker but he's got his old teammate right next to him from Indy Lights Colton Herta. He's been super fast today so he's looking for a good result. He's right up there in the championship so he's having a great second season. And for Pato Award, he's driven for Harding Steinbrenner Racing. He drove for Carlin Racing. Didn't quite qualify for the Indy 500 last year. But he now drives for former racer and team owner, co-team owner, Sam Schmidt. Sam is here in Road America this weekend. And do you know what Sam likes to do? Each Father's Day, there's a bucket list that he likes to check off with his children. The kids nominate what they'd like to do. They've done all kinds of things. Well, this past Father's Day, 
The kids wanted to go skydiving and Dad decided to go with them. Now, as many of you know, Sam has been in a wheelchair since a bad crash back in 2000, but it's never stopped him checking off those bucket list items. And they've done balloon racing, they've done scuba diving. Jumping out of a plane was just the latest thing to do. And Sam has never let his injuries hold him back. He's an inspiration to his family and the race team. And his young charge sits on the pole position. You're watching IndyCar Live, presented by Liberty Mutual. We'll be back with more from Road America in a moment. You're watching IndyCar Live, brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. We are looking at dramas and problems here for Alexander Rossi. Get the spare ECU ready. They won't let him plug in. Be able to power the car up now. Tell this official that we're going to start. And I just saw Alexander Rossi's car leave his pit box. They want you to the back, Alex. Okay, Alex, we've got a drive through penalty for what? We're working on the car and impound. Like we said, it's going to be a long night still. Alexander Rossi will be looking to turn things around. Rossi's off the pace, it's got a misfire. Car is dead. Switch it off. As Rossi climbs out. Let's go back to the garage, see if we can sort it out. And what a frustrating, frustrating start to this season. Alexander Rossi, two races to forget in the books, but two chances here to make it right. Oh, oh big the... off! Is that Rossi? I think we may have pro wing damage. Looks like it from the rough ride there. Do we pit? We'll need to pit. We see dust flying. Something with Rossi. Might have had contact right here. Max Chilton. Oh, oh. big contact. Oh, it's broken. What happened? Go, uh, hit me in. This has been a rugged start to the 2020 oh. season for Alexander Rossi. Alexander Rossi is not only an Indianapolis 500 winner, but he's a regular championship contender, but he is in really unfamiliar territory right now. He is 124 points behind championship leader Scott Dixon. And he's tied with his good friend and our new teammate, James Hinchcliffe, back in 22nd position in the championship, Hinch. Yeah, definitely not what we're used to seeing Alexander Rossi in the championship standings. And Alex, you were just watching there the recap of the first couple of races. We came into the weekend thinking, man, two bad ones down, but third time's a charm. Let's get it. They even burned sage and put the smoke over your car to get the bad luck out. That didn't exactly happen, did it? Uh, no, it didn't. It didn't do a whole lot except uh, make everything smell pretty bad. But yeah, as you said, it's it's been it's been a nightmare kind of start um but nonetheless under under the mass i think we're all smiling we still have the the faith in each other and this automation app and know-how crew knows how to how to get it done so um i think we've even though we're starting 10th um you know we've made a step forward from yesterday i think we have confidence in in the race pace we had yesterday so just uh, hopefully have a trouble-free day and get some points on the board and um, put the pass behind us. Yeah, you had some technical problems again yesterday, and with this tight schedule, it doesn't give you as much time to get it sorted out. Are we confident everything on the number 27 is ready to go and you guys can move forward? Yeah, we're confident. It's it's all resolved. Um, but yes, you, you bring up a good point. I'm looking forward to, to hopefully getting back to normal scheduling of race weekends in the near future. But nonetheless, it's, it's great to be here at Road America. It's great to have some fans here with us. And um, it's a big step towards getting back to, to what we all love and, and appreciate. And um, yeah, as I said, I, I hope we can just have a trouble-free day and give something uh, to these guys um, for all the work that they've put in the past couple of weeks. Alexander Rossi said it. I'm not sure they've had a trouble-free session yet this season, guys. Looking to make race two at Road America the best one yet. And the question really begs, doesn't it? Just what is happening with, with Alexander Rossi being so far back? And then there's another topic on a similar vein. That is Joseph Newgarden. Yesterday, the two-time and defending champion looked as slick as ever. And he led the most laps in this race. But when you lead the most laps, generally you're supposed to win. That did not happen. He won his second pole position of the year. And it just couldn't be going any better. That was until this. A very uncharacteristic mistake on pit lane from Team Penske. You could see Joseph's frustration there in the cockpit. And he just went flying out of the top 10. And it was a tough day from that point on. He's with Dave Burns. And Lee, uh, it, it describes something that we don't see at all road courses. You need first gear to race this track. Can you describe what it's like to have that tall first gear on pit road and the, the, what happened with you yesterday? 
Um, yeah, it wasn't a gear problem. You know, we, un we unfortunately had a little bit of an airbox fire, but um, it's one of those deals, you know, you can't always predict it. Sometimes it pops up and bites you. Um, but our guys are ready. You know, we've had a fast Chevy race car all weekend. Um, we were putting it to work yesterday and just, you know, wrong, wrong place, wrong time, didn't work out. But um, I feel good about today. I think our PPG car is, is really fast. Um, disappointed with qualifying, but we're just going to try and put that race pace that we had yesterday to work and get back to the front. Joseph, what did happen in qualifying? I know two of your teammates had penalties during that time. Did you need them on track with you? Uh, it would have helped. You know, we went out behind them, so that, that toe effect, I think, would have given us a little bit of speed. I don't think it was all of it. You know, I, I, we were quick on the on the primary tires when we first went out, and then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, um, just didn't get it all put together in the reds. And it's so it's so close that if you miss by yeah. just a bit, you can find yourself here in 14th. And I think that's that's what happened to us today. Well, his car wears a number one for a reason. He's the reigning champion. He'll try to find his way forward this afternoon, Lee. Yeah, just kind of bizarre that at Indianapolis at the Grand Prix last week, Will Power went in a good position, stalled, leaving his pit box. Joseph did the same yesterday. You expect the champ to rebound today? I think so, but it's a completely different kind of day for Joseph Newgarden. Yesterday started up front, clean air. It was a problem on pit lane. Today now deep in the pack, it's a different mentality. You've got to find your opportunities early and methodically work your way to the front. Much more difficult for Joseph Newgarden today. PT, we heard James Hinchcliffe talk to Alexander Rossi. You know Alexander well. You're a championship winning driver yourself. What's your assessment? What's going on? Well, this season's been a total disaster for, for his team. They've had two mechanical problems to start the season off. He made a mistake yesterday on the first lap, went off, off the track, and then the race just snowballed from there. But the, I think the problem we have, talk, talking to their team manager, Rob Edwards, it's such a big team now that they're just not able to react and maneuver. They're, they certainly don't have the pace they had last year, and they need to make quicker moves and changing directions on, on their car. These smaller teams probably have a little bit better advantage than that because they they're kind of free to do whatever they want. You agree with that? I do, but I also think that there's a famous phrase on pit lane, which is keep digging. That's what the teams will tell their drivers. In this case, you got to think of the famous phrase in life, which is if you're in a hole, stop digging. And I think yesterday, Rossi tried to put it all on his shoulders and pushed a little too hard, made a mistake there. He's got to recenter, refocus, bring it back together and get back to the form that made him a championship contender. Because you got to remember, in addition to the four regular Andretti Autosport cars, you now add Colton Herter with the Andretti Harding Steinbrenner. And there's a technical alignment with Maya Shank Racing and Jack Harvey. So that's a lot of work to do. As we are getting closer and closer to race start, race two in this double header, it'll be the fourth round on the year. And the first time that we've been able to welcome fans to a racetrack as part of the NTT IndyCar season for this year. And it's been good. It's been good to see the smiles on their faces. They've been tested. They've been temperature tested and screened coming into the track. And it's just nice to see them enjoying IndyCars at a socially distanced uh, position. They're going to enjoy this next 55 lapper and it's coming up real soon as IndyCar Live continues. You're watching IndyCar Live brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance, only pay for what you need. Gorgeous day here at Road America. The boys are making their way to the booth and will be calling the action here for the second of the doubleheader from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Fans in attendance, so glad to see them back. And they've got a pristine weekend to enjoy IndyCar racing at one of its most memorable venues. Started here in uh, 1982 with the IndyCar series, but it's been around a lot longer than that. That man right there, Scott Dixon, can he make it four in a row? But Pato Award will have something to say about that. He qualifies on pole today, and the youngster from Mexico sees nothing but clear track ahead of him as he gets the green flag today. They're all lined up, getting ready to go. Joseph Newgarden, we just spoke with him. The number one needs to get about 13 positions before he sees that position today. Now let's get things started here at one of the most memorable venues on the circuit, pre-race ceremonies. Standing is chaplain Jason Holt of the IndyCar Ministries offers today's invocation. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for the freedom to be able to gather together today in such an amazing event. And for the brave men and women protecting those freedoms both abroad and here in our country. We lift up each and every one of these drivers, teams, officials, and spectators that we might have a great day, a fun day, but most of all, a safe day of racing. 
And lastly, God, we just say thank you for the love and grace available to all at the cross of Jesus Christ, in whose name I pray. Amen. Here today to honor America with the singing of our national anthem, please welcome Assistant Chief of the City of Sheboygan Fire Department, Charles Butler. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Let's hear it for Assistant Chief Charles Butler and his performance of the National Anthem. What a beautiful day here in Wisconsin at Road America. And we are just a few moments away from seeing cars roll and we crank up and finish this doubleheader weekend here on NBC. Such a wonderful place to spend a summer break, whether it be on Elkhart Lake, Crystal Lake, this whole area here. It really puts you in a uh, pretty relaxed and uh, summertime mode, but there's nothing about relaxing here. You see the countdown to the command to fire engines and get things going. There's another 55 lap race, 220 miles here, and nobody has beaten this man here on screen this year, Scott Dixon. What a run he's had to start the 2020 season. This is just the beginning. Two 55 lap races, one today. Ready to go at Road America. Let's go. Here comes Santino Grass down the inside. Hunter Ray goes around the outside of Newgarden. Can't quite get it done. BK around the outside in the carousel. Oh. Are you kidding? Whoa. A big off. Is that Rossi? I think we may have pro wing damage. Yeah, copy that. Looks like it. Right now, you've got a very quiet, which means a very happy Joseph Newgarden. Oh! oh the number one is stalled. Firing up, he's in he's gear, he's got to get it out of gear. He is finally off and away. Fighting for a win, or what is it? Dixon is fighting for a win. Power runs long. Dixon's going to try and come back up the inside. Can't do it. He'll have to crash if he wants to pass me. Now go the outside, into turn six. Whoa! Oh, loses control. Is, and we've got a car in the gravel trap. Jack, Jack Harvey. Harvey. He's thrown away a top five. The two leaders come in. Oh, that's the number 12. He's spinning from up on the jack. They did not lower the jack in time. And Scott Dixon got out well in front of Will Howe. How can we ever get a drive? Unbelievable. Great, great. Oh! Oh, a ward, and that's contact. Daly is up and into the wall. The green is out. Let's go. Hello has a run again on Ryan Hunter Ray. He's going to have to go the long way around for that third spot. He's already got Hunter Ray. Nice job, buddy. P3. Scott Dixon wins three in a row to start the 2020 NTT IndyCar season. Unbelievable. Just to further how good Scott Dixon has been this year. There have been 335 laps raced. Dixon has led almost 200 of them in a dominant performance. Now there's a couple of guys with unfinished business here at Road America and our guys spoke with them a little earlier. Let's kick it off with Dave Burns and Will Power. So a strong P2 yesterday for Will Power represents what he could do today. 
but the qualifying position I know wasn't exactly what you wanted. What do you do coming from eighth? Yeah, it's a uh the tough thing is everyone's wise to the strategies now so you, you, you know that everyone's going to be pitting within a lap or two um, so you're not going to get that big undercut effect that we had yesterday and um, I think if we're smart on the start this whole position there's definitely a few guys up there that you know young guys that will be mixing it up and um, uh, you know hopefully everything doesn't play out for them <laughs> we can get a few positions but um, yeah I you never know what can happen. Like you saw yesterday, it just blew my mind. Like, you know, we did a good undercut, really quick outlaps. P3 come in, jump Ferrucci in the pits. Joseph stalls in the pits, and suddenly we're in contention for a win. So, you know, you just got to be, you just got to be smart and um, keep keep pushing away. Obviously, it's kind of troubling that Dixon just keeps winning. <laughs> like at some point, we you have to finish ahead of the guy to to start clawing back. But. Uh, yeah, it's been a frustrating start to the season, I have to say. Do you feel like you have pace here to challenge Dixon today? Yeah, we definitely have Dixon's pace. Uh, there's certainly some quick guys up the front. Um, you know, I think it kind of all evens out in the race, and you can be smart and look after your tyres and be a bit quicker at the end of the stint or push hard and try past people at the beginning. So a bit of strategy plays into, into that. And, uh, yeah, we'll just try execute again you know obviously there's a couple mistakes there yesterday we had uh, we had a wrong gear in the car we had a really really tall second in the car so i'm do dogging out a couple of those corners so we should be in better shape in that respect uh, be a little quicker than yesterday very good will power chasing yet another victory for team penske at road america Graham Rahal, a couple quick road course cars the last few races, but a couple of missed opportunities. Still came away with a good result in the Indy GP, but yesterday must have been a bit of a heartbreak. Yeah, it was tough, you know. I mean, I thought that Indy GP, you know, genuinely I, I thought was ours. You know, we seemed to be, you know, in really good control with strategy and it slipped away with a little bad fortune yesterday. It's obviously just a little mistake that cost us uh, potentially a race winning, you know, with, with, with Joseph stalling. But, you know, it's... Um, it's the way it goes. You know this as well as me. Sometimes it's the way it bounces. We just got to keep knocking on the door, and eventually I think it will come down. We got another good chance in the fifth, third car today, so hopefully we can make it happen. You're starting fifth today. You were telling me earlier that you think your pace on blacks is really good. So with being at a, a black tire race, do you think that you guys have as good a shot today? I do, and, uh, you know, I thought yesterday that, you know, once again, I thought the Honda engine was, was really good with fuel. Um, I was shocked, you know, when I saw Newgarden pull off in front of me. I figured he'd be saving. He wasn't under much pressure. Um, and yet we were still able to go further. So black tire pace, you know, combined with the fuel mileage that we were getting, I think that kind of opens things up a lot for us. So I think we'll be good today. I'm looking forward to it. Now tell me, is the mustache the key to the, the recent speed? It might be, <laughs> it might be, but I think the wife is going to veto that before I, I get too far down the road here. Fair enough. Well, rolling off fifth today, he's going to try to get Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan racing another podium. And I think when you see Graham in that kind of spirit, in that kind of mood, he is very dangerous. He's looked in great form the last couple of weekends, and as he said, a couple of things just haven't gone their way. So look for Ray Hall to be a contender here at Road America today. As you can see, lovely setting, beautiful day, and we're going to give the command to get things going here in a moment. And that guy, the two-time and defending champion, Joseph Newgarden, wants to make up for that mistake tomorrow. Let's go trackside for the command. Here we go. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in all of sports. Here to give the command, please welcome today's Grand Marshal from the Sturgeon Bay Fire Department, Fire Chief Tim Dittman. Drivers, start your engine. <laughs> So the engines fire for the Rev Grand Prix here at Road America. When we come back, it's time to bring the action. Can anybody stop Dixon? This is round four of the 2020 NTT IndyCar Series, and it's the second race in two days and it's the first of two back-to-back -back double headers because the next week at iowa as well let's take a look at today's starting grid presented by liberty mutual and a first-time pole sitter these two guys used to be teammates in indy lights just a couple of years ago 
the guy on the right owns the record for being the youngest ever race winner and pole sitter. That's Colton Herter, but it's Pat O'Award, his old teammate, on the pole position for the first time today. Another hard charger inside row two. Fantastic result yesterday on the podium for Alex Pillow as a rookie, and he qualifies third next to Ryan hunter Ray. Could have been yesterday's winner for Graham Ray Hall if it wasn't for a fueling issue in the pit lane, and yesterday's winner, Scott Dixon, three times so far this year. Can he do it again today? I think you're gonna see some fireworks from Felix Rosenquist today. He feels he should be on the podium so far this season. The sophomore driver is ready to give a big result. How about fireworks on row five? Jack Harvey, probably a little frustrated. He had a front row starting position in yesterday's race. And Alexander Rossi trying to come from his worst start ever in his IndyCar career and make the magic happen today. Santino Ferrucci yesterday was sniffing at a podium finish, had a late race uh, pit stop problem getting out of the pits. Sato had a good, good practice this morning and qualifying. He's looking strong today. Charlie Kimball inside row seven, and then Joseph Newgarden, who really, frankly, deserved the win had it not been for a stall on pit lane. He'll be looking to come forward in a big way early. Back to Renus VK, who pulled off the most spectacular outside pass yesterday. The rookie from the Netherlands has really found his footing in the NTT IndyCar Series. And on row nine, you've got two young Americans, Zach Veach settling in to his third season. And then Oliver Askew, who's been a front runner at the Indy Grand Prix, struggled a bit in qualifying. And then this, uh, this is gonna be an interesting row, Paul. Yeah, getting towards the back here, Marco Andretti still struggling with qualifying. But Connor Daly yesterday had a huge crash with Pato Award. And then we have Max Chilton got into it with Rossi and Simon Pagino's qualifying woes continue. He's way at the back. Young rookie Dalton Kellett from Toronto picks up the rear of the field. Guys, the first lap was so exciting yesterday. I think we're in for another treat. And we're going to have some different points of view for you. Joseph Newgarden, with thanks to PPG, will give us this look. And the onboards work great at certain tracks. And onboards like this, the Arrow Electronics aboard the pole sitting car of Pato Award is just spectacular at this four-mile track. His teammate, Oliver Askew, with thanks to Mission Foods. And then Felix Rosenquist will give us this view, courtesy of NTT Data, in one of three Chip Ganassi racing cars. A change of livery and sponsorship for today's race. Fifth Third Bank gives us this view of Graham Rahal. Could he be a race winner today? It's been a couple of seasons since he has won an IndyCar race. And with thanks to Gainbridge, we'll follow Zach Veach's view like this aboard the number 26. And then a couple of his Andretti Autosport teammates, Alexander Rossi, who desperately needs a good result. He gives us the Auto Nation on board and the same for Colton Herter, who is on the front row alongside his old Indy Lights teammate. It's a very youthful first three positions on this grid. Let's get one last minute update. Let's get down to James Hinchcliffe. We've talked about Road America being a tire race, and we're seeing the strategy play out already. The first car on primary tires, Alexander Rossi in 10th. The next guy, Joseph Newgarden. These guys know that they're going to have to do something different than the leaders to move up. It's already starting with their tire selection. Santino Ferrucci is a 22-year-old from Connecticut in his sophomore season. Had a great run yesterday to six. Paul mentioned it, sniffing a podium. The car is very fast. He told me moments ago that he just didn't get quite all of it lap put together in qualifying. He'll start back in 11th today. And Jimmy Vassar, his race strategist, told him, save fuel all the time. It's always necessary because, Lee, you know here, that's just one more option if you do it well. And a big thing for Ferrucci yesterday is when you're driving mid-pack or outside the top 10, in comparison to driving at the front of the field with guys, with champions and Indy 500 winners like Scott Dixon and Will Power, it's a whole different world. And that was a big confidence boost for Ferrucci yesterday. Here we are, drivers starting on primary tires like Hinchcliffe talked about. Everybody in the top 20 on reds, except for those two gamblers with Rossi Great and five. Newgarden. Get ready for the start. All right, get ready for the start. We're ready for the start. And you could say that the first three drivers, there is youthful exuberance in abundance. <laughs> Here we go. It's Pato Award for Arrow McLaren SP, the orange and black car, and the green and white is Colton Herter. And then the pink and black car for Dale Coyne Racing. Alex Pillow got his first IndyCar podium yesterday. It was a wild start here, less than 24 hours ago. What do we have today? Race two in the doubleheader, Road America, the Rev Grand Prix here at Road America. 
and Pedro Award gets the launch. Super late start, everybody packed up, contact in the back. It looks like with Pagano in the 20 of Paul Nerdo, his wing up. has just flown off, but oh, oh, on the right! Big crash, turn one cars, Harvey's off, it looks like Looks like Rossi might have been involved as well, but this is a big crash to start. It was a really late start. It is that Jack Harvey? Jack Harvey and Con uh, Connor Daly. Connor Daly had the incident right away. Caution is out. Oh, oh now Graham Rahal. Wild stuff on the first lap. We thought it we're was going to be the hard. We thought it was going to be the rookies that were making the mistakes, but we got vets out here making mistakes. Ray down. Hall and Hunter Ray, both with great starting positions, both with strong races yesterday as the AMR safety team checks on Ryan Hunter Ray. That was savage. Keep in mind, it's 180 plus miles an hour at the end of the front straight, and about 190 on the back straight where Graham Ray Hall went off. Yeah, it was super, it was super late restart, and it was smart of Pato Award to really wait on that, but it packed the whole field up as we see Connor Daly's front wing under his front wheel. Tough to get around the track like that and make all the corners, so that's gonna do a lot of damage to the underwing in the bottom of the car. And this head carpenter racing crew worked until 11 o'clock last night fixing this 20 US Air Force car because Connor suffered a huge crash yesterday. Ryan hunter -Ray is extracting himself from the cockpit of the DHL Honda and Graham Rahal already out. And he's had a good championship so far this season, so this is going to be another blow for him, for anybody trying to chase down Scott Dixon. Talking about two guys in the top six of the championship. Let's look for Connor Daly. Where is that US Air Force uh, car? It's sorry, uh, aim high right here. Yep, yeah, right there. Yeah, it was just a real late, slow start. And guys, everybody was wanting to go at the back here, and, and the front wasn't going, Townsend. And they just all, they were just amped up and ready. As Look you at how press the hill going. here at Road America, it's very difficult to see any any further than about a couple of rows. I'm guessing that some guys on the radio might have been telling their drivers from pit lane, hey, green, green, green. And then people checked up, perhaps. Uh, this is the view from Felix Rosenquist. Look up ahead at the yellow and red car. Dixon and Hunter Ray there. Dixon gets hit oh. by Will Power, gets punted. Will just sent him. Won't be, Hunter Ray will not this be is happy on board about with that. with Rossi looking over at Jack Harvey. Something's gonna happen here to Harvey on that inside. Rosenquist, there goes. Oh, and Harvey spins yeah, he on the inside. Locked it up, just lost the rear. Trying to lock it down, but here we have the front end view. Hunter Ray just gets hit from behind on the brakes from Will Power. That could draw a penalty, guys, for an avoidable contact. I'm wondering if there was contact too between Ferrucci and and uh, and Jack Harvey. And this is the Graham Ray Hall exiting turn oh. three. He high centered on the exit curve. Ooh. Oh boy! Hit Vicious hit to hit the end of that concrete block, Paul. Move the block over about two or three feet. Here, listen, so listen he to turns it. in. Will Power again makes contact with another driver. Oh, oh yellow, full force yellow. <laughs> Didn't Will Power say at the start Power he was going to take it easy? He said he was going to just out, take it hard. easy and watch, but he that was a massive hit. Yeah, he, he bumped Graham Rahal, which then got him out and high centered him on that exit curb, which generates a lot of rear wheel spin. And so, oh, man, that was that was a blunt force impact two major contacts but for will power and his adversaries here so we're gonna have to wait and see what happens with race control regarding that trying to get the nose off the front of this car a little bit of work you have that much damage probably damage the radio cord they've got to plug the radio back in here pinch and then hopefully not lose a lap yeah, this definitely isn't what these guys wanted to see. Struggled to get the nose off the number 20. He said that he just got brake tested on the on the start there. Oliver Askew started to go hit the brakes. We saw a bunch of guys lock up, and unfortunately, he was not able to avoid. Connor now is sitting in here after what he went through yesterday. This is not the start he wanted, but this is a long race. He just needs to keep his head in the game, and he can still make up some positions here with a brand new set of <laughs> brand new so yesterday's opening lap was frantic but spectacular. Today has been damaging. Graham Rahal, Ryan Hunter Ray out of the race. Connor Daly still in, and we'll find out more on Jack Harvey. Some big hits on the opening lap.
CNBC's coverage of IndyCar is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Honda, an official vehicle of the NTT IndyCar Series. And by PNC Bank, helping to make banking easier. First time we've had fans at an IndyCar event this year, and while we've got the time under yellow, a uh, reminder about Thursday, 30 Rock returns for an all-new reunion. 30 Rock, a one-time special, Thursday on NBC, and all 30 Rock specials, as a reminder, available Wednesday on Peacock, NBC Universal's new streaming service. There is the massively wounded car, the fifth third bank Honda of Graham Rahal after he hit the end of the concrete barrier there where the AMR safety team are. Fortunately, Graham was able to step from the car himself and has headed back to medical. Uh, that was a lucky escape. That could have been ugly. Sadly, he's out of the day and Graham Rahal coming into this race was fifth in the NTT point standings. So, uh, not the day he was looking for. There's a couple of race wins that got away from him and this whole race now is extinguished. Yeah, this is just more money in the bank uh, for Scott Dixon uh, against his main competitors in this championship. He's up front right here, and he's got all his major championship rivals behind him. Will Power. Will right Power. There. Yeah, Will Power's right there, but we're still waiting to... And we just got word, penalty for Will Power. He will start at the tail end of the field for that contact with two cars at the beginning of the race. So more money in the bank for Dixon. So he will go from fifth to 22nd. You want to hear this, man, but they're calling us for avoidable contact. I don't know how the hell that happened. Um, you know, he was crashing already, but <laughs> they're going to make you restart from the back of the field uh, all the way back at, by the car 20. I'm not sure who they were referring to in terms of crashing already. Um, Ryan Hunter Way wasn't on his way to crashing. Graham Rahal didn't seem to be either. On board with Rahal again. You see that left uh, left side camera with that DHL yellow wing, and maybe we'll see Hunter Ray come sliding off Ooh, really, really, really close, close with there. Dixon. And then watch here, watch to the right. Watch to the right at turn three of power. Here comes power. Gonna see a hip check right here. Boom. Power was in in late and missed the apex, so kind of hip checked Ray Hall right out of the way. So I, I think know. it's a fair penalty. I don't know about you fellas. I didn't I didn't notice in the first instance that side contact with Felix Rosenquist either. As Rosenquist got damaged, there's the 10. Seems to be okay. Quick break, then we'll go back to racing. NBC Universal's new streaming service is filled with hit movies, current shows, sports, news, and exclusive originals. And you can watch for free and upgrade for more. Join the flock at PeacockTV.com. And on the motor racing flavor, don't forget that our teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., his uh, show, his original show, Lost Speedways, premieres this Wednesday on the 17th. Uh, really looking forward to that. And I know that Junior's been so excited about that. So it's a really cool concept. And that's the kind of shows that we're offering you on Peacock. As we welcome you back, Lee Diffie, Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy. PT won here a couple of times. Now Scott Dixon has won here a couple of times. We'll see if he can win his third here at Road America and fourth in a row. And we know that Will Power got a penalty to the back. So too did Connor Daly for avoidable contact. So both those guys are ready to go. And so are we at the front of the field with three youngsters. Pato O'Ward, Colton Herder and Alex Pelot. Are you ready to see some racing? We are, because it was a crazy opening lap. Let's see if we can get into a rhythm. And the Arrow McLaren SP Chevrolet has gone. Great start, Pato Award. That was a really nice restart, Townsend. He got a nice launch off the corner. He got a nice little gap on the straightaway, which is exactly what you need is Dixon now. is looking at the back of Palo. Palo is a very quick restarter as well. How about Simon Pagano there in the Menards car making a move? I think that was Takuma Sato. Yellow car, there it is there, Simon Pagano, the reigning Indy 500 champ. Max Chilton makes his way past Oliver Askew in that blue car. How about Power and Daly? They're trying to make their way through as quickly as they can, but it'll be tough. Long stretch of the legs down the hill here to turn five. And Dixon, the orange and blue car, the PNC Bank Honda in fourth, is already looking to make a move to get into the top three. Oh, Ward looks very composed at the front. It's like he's been leading these Indy car races for a long time. Super smooth, no wheel spin, no oversteer. 
We ride on board with Award looking out the back at Colton Herta now. He's got a lot of experience fighting with Colton Herta from their Indy Lights days. These guys went back and forth in, their, in, in Paddle's championship season. So he's very comfortable racing with Colton Herta. And he's very comfortable at the front too because in that year when he won the Indy Lights championship on the road to Indy, part of the road to Indy series, that really embraces youth on their way and their ambitious way to one day getting to IndyCar. I think Paddo won seven or eight or nine races. It was a very dominant performance. Now, while we're up to speed and we're getting into a rhythm, Graham Rahal has been released from medical. Let's hear from him. Standing by here, that was a wicked looking hit. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm uh, I'm sorry for the, you know, Fifth Third Bank and for all of our partners who, uh, you know, hope for a good day just like us. It's it's disappointing to, you know, to see kind of desperation moves like that that early in the race. But, you know, I mean, that is what it is. And, you know, we're okay from the hit. I think everything uh, did its job. So uh, go from there. He's, <laughs> he's off the track there. And small there. consolation, he did get an avoidable contact penalty. Yeah, I mean, he's getting what he deserves today, I think. Uh, he took Ryan out, I think, and me. And, um, you know, it's just uh, it's frustrating because, again, it's uh, like what I just said, it's a desperation move. And I've made him before, so I, I know him well. But, uh, you know, I was just disappointed because I thought that uh, we had a really good chance today. And, uh, you know, some guys very aggressive on the start. We wanted to be one of them. Just didn't quite work out. Uh, but, um, you know, it's all good. We'll, we'll be back. Yeah, I mean, we just got bumped there straight the outside. And then, you know, I did, you know, I lost it. I didn't know. Obviously, it went yellow literally as I hit, which is uh, salt in the wound. But. You know, we're going to have to just reboot. we got Iowa next week. Got a couple chances to win there. That's right. Another doubleheader next week in a hot Iowa and a chance to take home two trophies out today is Graham Rahal. All right. It's difficult to keep up with everything that's going on here. Power has obviously stalled the car. He's calling for assistance. We're under yellow. And while all this was going on, the 18 of Santino Ferrucci was given a penalty as well for avoidable contact for hitting Jack Harvey on that opening lap. It's got a lot of damage there, Townsend. There's a lot of fluid on the windscreen. Here's... Uh, Santino Ferrucci is, who's got some kind of issue as well, but right now there could be terminal damage with power. It looks like there's fluids on the side part of the car and on the windscreen. Oh, damage there to the left front wing. Let's see what happened to Will Power. Oh, turn 13 off. off on his own. Oh, Whoa. bunny hopping his way. Now he's going to take out a rev sign. He looked like PT in the early 90s there. This is, yeah. uh, this is a sloppy. I mean, we haven't even done one full green lap. Or similar to Rossi yesterday, but a lot more damage to the car. Ooh, very lucky escape for Askew there. But somehow, to see all the damage on the front wing, and then there's a lot of fluid in there around the, en the entry to the side pod, Dave. Standing by with Ryan Hunter right now, who's been watching that action, but the race never got started for you. What happened heading into turn one? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I had a, uh, a decent start. We were actually running a little bit heavier downforce than the others, uh, hoping that on the long run we were going to be strong as opposed to yesterday. And uh, I think we're going to have a good good race today with this 28 DHL Honda. But I don't know. I just got nailed from behind. I, don't, I really haven't seen anything. You guys have a video maybe you could yep, show me? Here it is right uh, here. Walk us through it. Yeah, I don't know where he's going. It seems to be uh, driving a little bit desperate today. It's been a wrecking ball so far. I don't know. but. It's unfortunate we just got some uh, points finally yesterday and you know the first two races of the season we had our own issues and we had electrical issues and mechanical issues so finally we're on our way and yeah turn one long race unfortunately um, you know we could have plenty of time to battle this thing out today but it is what it is we'll pick up and move on to Iowa for a double header next week but yeah just big thanks to everybody involved the guys did a great job this weekend on the car crew was amazing and um, thanks to our partners. Appreciate it. Ryan, you've known Will for a while. In IndyCar, how are these things handled between drivers? It's not very like him. I mean, he's, he finally had a, good, a better day yesterday, so he's getting back up in points, and it's a long season ahead. Obviously, we've got to do something to catch Dixon. I don't know. I, I'm not really sure what's going on, but you can't, definitely can't win the, the whole thing in the first corner. So I'll ask him about it, but he, uh, he hit me and then took – Graham out and now just took himself out. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's feeling a little off today. All right, Thanks. sorry, you're out. Ryan Hunter Ray done for the day, guys. Here comes Power down Pit Road. And uh, have a look at this. The two guys who got taken out by Will Power uh, comparing notes. <laughs> and as that happened, of course, Power goes off again with authority there in that final corner. Think of the amount of wins between these three guys, and you got all these rookies up front with no wins. We 
Yeah, it's funny to see who's kind of making the mistakes so far in this race as the 12th crew, they go to work on the car. Front nose change, you're gonna take a good look at the left front there. That was a pretty bumpy ride Somebody he took tear off. through turn 13. And the tear off hold, Will's just sitting in there. He knows that this race isn't actually done for him. He's got plenty of tires to go, so this is actually still an opportunity for Will Power to potentially bounce back. Askew was stalled. Right there you go. Stalled it on the pit stop. He was already at the back anyway, so he kept coming in top up with fuel. So really not any any harm for Oliver Askew here with that stall. Remember, his car's wounded after he got hit by Connor Daly coming that, to green. That's right, but what's interesting for Will Power, as sloppy and crazy as the, the start's been, we're now at six laps completed, working lap seven. Power's now in the window to make this on two more stops, so anything's possible, and you just get the feeling with the pace Power showed yesterday, if he can keep it clean on the opening lap of the restart here, he might just luck into another podium. Well, he's got to not unravel anymore, and he's got a history of that. He, he's up front. He's a guy that can control the pace and win races quite easily, but when things go wrong, they seem to really unravel quickly. Paul, you, you were a driver who needed to be told to calm down. Who got you to calm down and what did they say to you to get you to calm down? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody <laughs> got me to calm down. No, but my, my, probably my best, my biggest influence in my career was my engineer, Tony Sicali, was a guy who could really just get me to understand that, you know, you, again, you don't win the race in the first lap in the first 10 laps. You gotta be there at the end. You gotta have a car that's capable of winning at the end as these guys now are getting ready to go, go green here. James, what do you think strategy-wise? What are your thoughts? Well, I think what we're, we were gonna see some guys doing the undercut. Now what I think you're gonna see is guys coming in around the original pit window, which is because of the extra laps under yellow, they've got more fuel. They can probably run into about lap 20 because you're gonna see guys come in a lot around lap 14, around lap 15 to try to do that undercut and pick up some positions in the pit sequence. Ready to go again. You've got a 21-year-old leading a 20-year-old. It's a very youthful feel at, at the front of this field. And then the five-time champion is tucked back there in fourth. Watch for him to make a move. Another good restart from Pat Oliver. Let's go again. And here comes Alex Pelot. Pelot got a great restart. He's right there in the draft. Heard a blocks the inside. Will he go for the outside? He does, Townsend. And he's got the momentum. He's got the draft from the car in front. They'll go side by side. Oh. And he clears them. Beautiful pass from Alex Pelot. Well done. He did for that the rookie. to Ryan Hutter Ray yesterday. And that's what set him on his path to his first career podium in just his third race. He was absolutely beaming with confidence after the race. He was so stoked to be oh, able to have his first podium, and he could have a shot at a win today. Not only that, Alex Pelot driving for one of the smaller teams in the field, Dale Coyne racing, but their car setup has been spectacular as Joseph Newgarden in that light blue number one car puts a move on Zach Beach. And Newgarden moving through the field. Now he's in the, inside the top 10, had a bad qualifying this morning, so uncharacteristic of him. And look at Pagano, just a couple cars. He started in 22nd hitch, and now he's all, already up to 13th. We've seen some incredible restarts from below, and I'm wondering, both times against the dirty Oxford cars, we saw Colton Herta not able to keep up with Cotto Award and also get swallowed there by Pelot as the gearing in the Andretti Autosport car is not ideal for the restarts on this long front straight. I think Ryan Hunter Ray might have also given us an indication. Hunter Ray talked about running more downforce today to try to help the long run. So that would disadvantage if Colton Herta also went with higher downforce. It would disadvantage Colton earlier on when the tires are fresh. But perhaps Colton will come on strong at the end of the tire stint. Considerably cooler today than yesterday. Yesterday, track temperature was about 85, 87 degrees. Track temp was about 120. Today it's 105 and 73. So downforce will be up today. Gearing will need to change. It was a, a little bit breezier today than yesterday as well. 19-year-old Renus VK in that blue and white direct supply Chevrolet for Ed Carpenter Racing. He had a terrific run yesterday. He's the biggest mover in this early stage of the race today. He's made up nine positions from his starting spot. The same as Simon Pagano, by the way, who made good ground. But yesterday, the Indy 500 winner, around the carousel, one of the most treacherous corners in motorsport, was just well we beyond his we years as a 19-year-old rookie. It was awesome. We've got, like I said at the beginning of the show, a youth movement at the front of the field here. All these young 
fast Charger drivers, and then you got the Wiley Championship veteran of Scott Dixon in the mix. gives you the numbers, watch for the top speed. 174. 83. Oh, and here comes, here comes uh, Charlie Kimball into Canada Corner. Great move. 189 miles an hour out of New Garden. As we get to lap 10 here, the fuel window opens to maybe think about pulling a New Garden to pit lane and getting them out in clean air and get your three stops done that way rather than trying to stretch the first stop. I wonder if anybody's going to gamble here and try to do it on pace by getting clean air. New Garden stays out. Nice pace today for Charlie Kimball. Nice pace yesterday with an 11th place finish for the A.J. Boyd Enterprises team. Remember, this is a team that isn't substantially large compared to a lot of their competitors, and they operate out of two different shops, Houston, Texas, and Indianapolis, Indiana, with a new teammate this year. So uh, they do a lot with a little, and Charlie Kimball, the veteran, has brought to this team the kind of thinking that you need from a driver who's been around a long time as they run this car full-time, then the 14 with a cast of shall we say, very good characters, Lee. And this is a good shot in the arm for the AJ Foyt racing team. It's been a long time since we've seen them running inside the top 10 like they are today. Paul Newgarden under attack with Kimball, and here's Marco Andretti on the red, so that gamble on black tires for Newgarden early on here not paying off. But it is paying off for Alexander Rossi, who was the highest starting car on those black Firestone Firehawks, the harder compound. And in amongst all the chaos, Rossi is in the top 10 in seven. This is the kind of result he needs. He can to keep building on this. Herder, Dixon, Rosenquist, VK. Then here's Alexander Rossi. His results thus far this year have been very un-Alexander Rossi. 15th, 25th, 19th. He hasn't led a lap since his victory here at Road America a year ago. Certainly been a very frustrating year for him. It's been first two races, mechanical troubles, then yesterday was just kind of a disaster, early mistake, and it all kind of snowballed on him. But right now, things going to plan. They made big time changes this morning. All the Andretti cars looked like they had a lot of changes going on to start the race. And we've got a good mix of them up towards the front right now. All the while, Scott Dixon patiently riding in fourth place, like yesterday, waiting for his moment. Total confidence that as the race plays out, his Chip Ganassi team will give him the strategy and the performance on pit lane that made the difference. Be interesting to see who goes on the undercut or the overcut? I think Dixon's going to try to run. Instead of coming in early, he's going to try to go a little bit longer than these guys. And Dixon is swimming in a sea of inexperience. The other five drivers in the top five have a combined 63 race starts. Dixon has 325. Hey, Hinch, I really feel, though, that these young drivers have now benefited so much from being on Sims all winter. Because we were shut down for so long, these drivers had so much time getting to know these tracks and working with their engineers that I think it's a really big advantage now for these young drivers. Yeah, no doubt, Paul. All these guys that are coming in, working with new engineers, having this sim time has really allowed them to build that relationship that sometimes takes a while. I think this is also a huge endorsement for the Indy Light Series. Pato Award, Colton Herter, Felix Rosenquist, Liz VK, all graduates of Indy Lights, four of the top six right now. These guys are young, but they're coming in prepared and ready to run at the front with experienced guys like Scott Dixon. The other thing about the simulator experience, Paul, is we did six broadcasts on NBC with iRacing, and I think that gives the young drivers exposure to the racing personalities of their competitors and their veterans. Only about five more laps from the center. Pato Award, the 21-year-old Mexican. 
now based in Indianapolis, is enjoying a clear track ahead. What a day for Aaron McLaren SP. Rev Grand Prix here at Road America continues, and there has been a string of pit stops, including the three-time winner this year, championship leader Scott Dixon. Status quo on that stop. He came in with Herta and left with Herta in about the same gap, Townsend. So stops were dead equal to each other. Yeah, it looked like maybe Dixon had an issue on the right rear tire change. Just watch as he comes to the marks. Reds comes off. New blacks go on. You can just see through there the right rear yeah. having a trouble fitting it on the hub. So probably lost three or four seconds there, but Dixon down and away and then almost a moment there with Simon Pagano coming into the box. So if with no mistakes there on that back tire, he definitely would have gotten ahead of Herta, but you see the inside rear tire changer is just struggling there to get the wheel on, as now we see Polo has now pitted. Polo down and away, and we'll have to see how he blends out with Scott Dixon and Colton Herta. Award still on track, making good fuel mileage, so he is still out there. So here's Polo. Polo. He'll be ahead of Dixon. Dixon's just coming through the final turn yeah. right now. How about Colton Herta who's coming up the front straightaway? Polo should be able to leapfrog Herta looking on the right-hand side of the screen. There's Colton Herta in the green and white car. So Polo with a great stop. Both Herta and Dixon a little slow. Watch this blend with Green as BK. BK comes out in front end. Rossi pulls out in front of Dixon, but Dixon will get him on hot tires. But that was a nice little stop for these guys. BK on cold tires. Colton Herta, oh, that's tight right there. Both oh. these drivers on blacks. Here we go. Herta on BK. Forcing him to go to the outside. He's got the momentum with the push to pass. He should have him clear by the brake zone, but it's gonna, he's going to fight back oh. BK. He just clears the nose of BK and then takes the brake zone away. Great driving from Colton Herta, anticipating and defending the opportunity to shoot up the inside. Dave? Well, you were talking about that jump that Pelot was able to make past Herta. That was because Herta had, in, in addition to a great stop by Pelot, Herta had a little bit of a bobble, bobble leaving his pit stall. And any little bobble like that can cost you time on the track. Oh, car off the track up there. Zach Beach, Zach Beach had an off very fast corner. That's where Colt, or, uh, Connor Daly crashed yesterday. So you do not want to get off up there. But O Ward still on track with Rosenquist. So these guys are really going long. Going long and going fast. Pato Award clicking off laps in the 147 range as we see a replay with Beach. He's wide at the apex and then wide at the exit. That was right where Connor Daly went off yesterday and crunched that 20 US Air Force Chevrolet. Top seven cars are yet to pit change that because Kimball and Harvey are now in. Leader stays out. Pato Award continues as Townsend said, and Felix Rosenquist as well. Look oh. at this, Palo. Well, that's Askew. That's Oliver Askew. Oliver Askew looks just like Palo's car, but it's got those blue wing end plates. So this is not for position. It is for but position Rinas, on the track. Trinus BK has an issue. Looks like he went off at the last corner. Yeah, in the game here. We're fine. He was running right in front of Scott Dixon and had had some kind of an issue. Looks like he went off yeah, track. We're good here. Joseph Newgarden rounds up Charlie Kimball. And here comes VK as well. Inside move, fairly straightforward there. So when will we see race leader Pato Award in? I kind of like the strategy, Townsend, because he's out there in clean air, and now these guys like Dixon and Herta and Rossi, they're all fighting with kind of back markers. Kellen is in front, Askew, so that's not going to help their lap times. To see a replay here. Just, just uh, Alex Palo on Oliver Askew really well. But you know what? Palo has clear air where he is on the track, as does race leader Pato O'Ward. And here he is. He's finally in. Race leader led all 14 laps thus far, Dave. And Lee, when I talked to Pato about yesterday's race, he came home eighth. He wasn't really pleased with that, and he felt one of the areas that they really needed to improve on was the pace that they could make with the primary tire. That's what's sitting in pit lane right now. The 30-pound front tire wheel assemblies come off. The 40-pound front tire wheel assemblies go on the back, and now he heads down pit road. Looked like a clean stop from where I stood, guys. 
going to be tight. Pelo right. is coming through Draw the final corner. The O'Ward the should wing. keep the lead. Like I, think he's, be I think he's well in the push lead here. Pelo isn't even in sight yet, so here comes Kellett. Nick's got that a nice gap. Pelo. Great lights it up out of the line. I'll tell you one thing that it was great overtake. to see today. It was great to see Robert Wiggins here this weekend with the team, also coaching these two young drivers. Excellent stop for Pato Award. But this young guy right here, heck of a day yesterday. Again, first podium finish. Strong, composed, great racecraft. Now take a look at this on the left-hand side. This is how Alex Pelot jumped Colton Herta. Pit in lap, so Colton Herta a little quicker on the in lap coming to pit lane. But Pelot matched him on the out lap, and you can see the total time gain really close between the two, but advantage Pelot by two hundreds almost, sorry, two tenths, two hundreds, excuse me, almost three hundreds there for Pelot. So that was the difference on the sequence of pit stops. Well, problem is Herta came out behind Askew. Pelot was able to get by, and now Herta just got by Askew, and he's pulled out almost a five-second gap on Herta now as he was held up behind Oliver Askew. That's the variable that you really have a tough time controlling. For instance, Newgarden, who pitted early there, he came out in traffic with Connor Daly and Zach Veach, and that's the risk you run is really hard to predict exactly where you might file out of pit lane. And if you're looking for clean air, really sometimes gotta watch it be surprised. Right here, Rosenquist now has gone longer, and his teammate, both Ganassi cars, might cycle out in front of these guys like Herda because they, they went a little bit longer and they had clear road. Both, both the Chip Ganassi racing cars running one, two, come in for a regular service. Very clean stuff from the tender. Had to pop a little bit to get around his teammate. It's not always the best move to pit when the car in front of you is in pit lane for that very reason, but a good clean stop for both these cars. Rose going to cycle out in front of Herta, so that was a, a great overcut example of going a little bit longer on track. Oh. And look at his teammate now. Both teammates come out in front of Scott Dixon because they ran longer on track. Did you see how precise Scott Dixon was with the placement of his car? As Rossi. Rossi comes forcing his way through Erickson. I mean, those are all the little things that Scott Dixon does so well. Staying calm, staying precise, and keeping high percentage, mo high percentage moves in mind early on. Rossi on red tires, Dixon on blacks. This is a confidence builder right now for Alexander Rossi. He's fighting now with the championship leader. This is what he needs to build this confidence hinge. Yeah, guys, so what we're seeing here, we're talking about undercuts and overcuts. Let me explain that a little bit for you. As these tires start to wear, they start to degrade, the lap time slows down. So if you pit on the early side of the window, get a new set of tires on, have a really good outlap, and start using that new rubber to lay down fast laps while the other driver is still driving around on tires that are slowing down, that's called an undercut. But sometimes, if you have a problem in pit lane, if you have traffic and you come on your outlap and you can't get those fast laps in, staying out longer in clean air actually is the advantage. Yes, Yesterday, we saw a lot of guys use the undercut to good, good effect. Today, Felix Rosenquist has done an awesome job going longer and using that overcut. And I'm just blown away by the pace that Felix Rosenquist was able to keep up and the fact that that car, the left front wheel, and the whole suspension assembly stayed intact after that massive hit and contact with Graham Rahal on the opening lap of the race. Talk about opening laps as Max Chilton comes to pit lane. Will Power is the leader. Red, going to stick a red. Go going in. Going to get your half a turn in front of the wing here. Turn, maybe bring on your go. Oh, nice stop, a little bit late to the gas, but if you see the battle on the front straight, it was green as BK. Battling with Zach Beach, Oliver Askew right there. Now slid back up into third place. Ferrucci and Power that had issues early have yet to pit because they pitted under yellow. Hinch, I wonder if you've heard any radio communication with Power and his engineer Dave Faustino on fuel mileage because they last pit on lap six. That's pretty early in the window. You need to save a lot of fuel to make it on two more stops. Yeah, they've been pretty quiet. They've not been telling me too much about that yet. I think they realize they're in a bit of a difficult situation. They're going to need a yellow at just the right time for this 12 car to stay up front at this point. Is Will Power in the Verizon 50 uh, Chevrolet 
on board with Alexander Rossi. This is just a few moments ago. Red tires, black tires, deep on the brakes for Alexander Rossi, and he makes that position count. But again, sensibly, Dixon doesn't challenge it too hard. Tries to do it here up the hill to turn six. And then thinks again. Dixon is such a pro at just collecting points, guys. He never puts himself in a bad spot or in, in the danger zone with other drivers. Always recognizing the little things, like knowing Rossi on the red softer compound early on in, in the stint where those red tires are fresh, have more grip, and ultimately has an advantage over Dixon while he runs his stint on the black tires. So it's just the big picture Good job, thinking the and pass. all the decisions that go into that. Colton slower than you are. We just need to look after the car and get to the nine. The familiar voice of... I am, uh, looking out the field now. Award is closing the gap to Will Power. Now it's down to 3.3 seconds. It was uh, as much as six after the pit stop, so his car is fast. Some good coaching from Rob Edwards there from Andretti Autosport to his driver, Alexander Rossi, saying you're in a good position. That was an important pass. Settle in now, meet the fuel numbers. Let's see what we can turn today into. The stars are aligning for a tournament like no other. You can watch Charles Barkley, Steph, Cur uh, Steph Curry, Patrick Mahomes, and many more as they teed up at Lake Tahoe. It's the American Century Championship that continues today at 3 Eastern right here on NBC Race Leader. Pato Award for Arrow McLaren SP is just running away. This is a phenomenal drive. He has been out in front for 14 laps in the lead. And now, on pit stop cycle, everybody's done. He is right out in front by getting by Will Power there with that legit pass. And off he goes. And this IndyCar telecast from Road America is being brought to you by Liberty Mutual. The second and a half faster on that lap than Will Power. Will Power, all kinds of issues today. He gets into it with Ryan Hunter Ray right off the start, then gets down to the next corner, gets into it with Graham Rahal, and then to finish off the lap, wait for it. You got to wait for it here. He drives off the track on his own, goes sailing through the signboard. One of his sponsors, Rev, knocks the front wing off of it, has to come in, goes to the back of the field, works his way back to the front, but Townsend, he just got overhauled by Award, and that kid is flying right now. Award is flying, and Power has to save fuel, so I'm sure Power driving to a very conservative fuel number along with Santino Ferrucci, who rides in third, because both Power and Ferrucci pitted on lap six, so in order to make it on two more stops, they need crazy good mileage. Yeah, really in fuel save mode here, and it's really hard to make lap time, isn't it, Hitch, when you gotta save fuel and coast to the corners. So Ward is really in the catbird seat. He could just go flat out. Yeah, the better your car's handling, the easier it is to save fuel. And the way these drivers save fuel is at the end of these long straightaways here at Road America, if you're normally braking at the 300 board, you're gonna lift off the throttle at the 600 board, maybe the 500 board, coast down to just pass the 300 board. And that posting period is exactly when you do it as Felix going for a pass on Alex Pelot. Rosenquist on Pelot, turn one. Pelot wanted to come back on the inside wasn't able to do it. So that was for fourth spot. Great work from the Intin team on the driver Felix Rosenquist. Great job. Pretty you ahead of you as a leader on our strategy. For Rosenquist, you can hear a ward on the same strategy as Rosenquist and also Alex Pelot. So these are the guys that are going to kind of push, not save fuel, push as hard as they can, go chase down Pato Award and battle for the win. Remarkable when you consider how hard Rosenquist was hit when Graham Rahal got pushed wide got sideways, and then the two cars impacted very, very hard side to side, but Rosenquist's car appears yeah. to be unscathed. Yeah, that was a pass for fourth and fifth, but effectively on the road, these guys with the strategy are really second and third, so Power and Ferrucci are out of sequence. They're gonna be pitting here pretty soon, and they just don't have the pace that these cars cars have on the newer tires. And if you look at let your eyes walk down a little bit further, it's turning into a better and better day. Andretti Autosports' Alexander Rossi. We've documented well and in detail his struggles in the first three races of this season. There he is in the background there in the Auto Nation Honda. This team and Alexander Rossi need a good result here today. He won the Road America race a year ago by almost 30 seconds in one of the most dominant performances you've ever seen. This year has been very, very different, but today could be a turning point. 
absolutely. I mean, it's great to get a win, pull one out of the out of the hat. As say as uh, Rosenquist now is looking at Santino Ferrucci. He's right there. He will use the post to power pass. To pit lane. Power locks it up, getting down to the 90 mile an hour speed zone. Rosenquist in the draft. Not quite close enough. He'll have to make a really late braking maneuver, and he does. There goes Rosenquist, fairly straight forward, and you'll see Ferrucci pit soon. Hitch. The Horizon car is coming into the grid. Pit stops are what did undid them, sorry, yesterday, dropping them from first to second. He hits his marks just a little bit long. Four black Firestone primary tires going back on a little slow on the right front there. It's not going to hold him up. All the fuel gets in. He's now got to keep his head down, but he can't put his foot down too hard. He's going to be in fuel saving probably for the rest of this race. Fast stop, but he sure was sloppy. That inside front tire almost went up over top of the front wing as the, when the guy lifted it up. That's a 30-pound front tire, and he picked it up, and it flew out of his hands to show you the kind of strength that these pit stop guys have. Teammates fighting here, the orange and blue car is Scott Dixon, the white and red car is Marcus Erickson. Two of the three Chip Ganassi racing cars. It's the fight for seventh. Erickson in a little better shape, quite a bit better shape on fuel than Scott Dixon. Dixon pitted on lap 12, Erickson lap 16. Almost halfway through the race, O'Ward has now stretched it out to a seven and a half second lead. So right now, feeling comfortable as these guys here are all battling each other for position. This former F2 and F1 driver, Marcus Ericsson, is a quietly spoken Swede and not a big self-promoter, nor is Dixon either, but he is keen to make his mark in the NTT IndyCar Series this year. Last year, driving for then known as Schmidt Peterson Motorsports, uh, learned about the IndyCar tracks and just the nuances of the series. Now he's ready to pounce and he's doing a super job. Let's go back to some Pato Award Radio. Have a listen. Nice job. We are plus seven to Palou, who is on our strategy. Will and Santino behind you are off strategy. Let's keep looking after your tires. And Santino Ferrucci is in the pits now, guys. He was told by Jimmy Basser, his race strategist, nice long stop. We're going to fill it up. So he's out here now on primary tires again, Ferrucci running very well, but having to give up the spot there. Last pitted on lap six under caution. His teammate, Alex Below continues on having pitted on lap 13. Paul, I saw the mechanic cranking in front wing, adding front wing on the blacks. Normally we see the opposite. So it must be a lot of understeer for Santino Perucci. Yeah, the track's definitely rubbering up as Erickson now looks down the inside of, of his teammate. So looks like not as strong as, as he was yesterday, but he's also not putting himself in any tricky spot to get any damage or fall out of this race. He yeah, spoke to his engineer, Mike Hanna, I said, hey, are you guys having to hit a number? Why is Scott slowing down? He says, no, we somehow burned off the rear tires. We're not sure why this didn't happen yesterday, but Scott is really struggling with the back end of that car. As you see him get a little sideways coming off of turn eight. It's about 10 degrees cooler, the ambient temperature, 10 cooler. There's Mike Hanna, renowned race engineer, came over from Dale Coyne last year with the youngster Santino Ferrucci to the five-time champ, Scott Dixon. Well, and again, Dixon, four more laps on those tires than Erickson. Colton Herta also has four laps more on his tires as Erickson hunts down Colton Herta. Erickson looking very strong at this stage of the race. Getting ready to peel off here into the pits. Will he come this time? Yep. And he does. Two stage pit speed limit. First time here at Road America, 90 miles an hour, then 45 miles an hour. And look at the difference. Slow and steady is going to be the name of the game for the number nine crew here. These guys train almost as much as the drivers do because, as Paul said, these tires are not light. They've got to work under pressure. Scott, perfect on the marks. Fuel goes in. Scott knows he's in a good position here. That first stop was a little bit of a bobble. They're adding in some front wing. And he's away on a fresh set of Firestone Blacks. Fast stop. That's Erickson now is all over the back of Colton Herta. Great run for... Marcus Erickson so far today. Well, 
Watching out the back here with Colton Herta. You know, Herta's car and the rest of the Andretti guys yesterday in the race, all through practice, frankly, bit of a handful holding on to these Andretti Autosport cars, but we talked to team manager Rob Edwards this morning. They made a lot of changes overnight, and all of their drivers reporting a much more secure feeling out of the back end of their Indy cars. But for Colton Herta, like I talked about earlier, four laps more on these tires than Erickson. That's 16 miles at Road America. That's a big difference in terms of tire degradation. Here comes Erickson, a veteran of almost 100 Formula One Grand Prix in that red and white Husky chocolate Honda, really closing in on Colton Herta. He's had back-to-back -to -back top 10s, says Erickson, and I think he's really found his groove. He's got a nice relationship going with race engineer Brad Goldberg. They know that they're speaking the same language as Newgarden peels off. The two-time champ is in pit lane. This is a fight for a top five spot. Newgarden comes in on reds for that long drive down pit lane. Be interesting to see which compound he selects for the next stint. The reigning champ rolls into his box. Four Firestone Blacks going on. The red lap is pretty well for Joseph Newgarden. Pretty happy with the car. Minor adjustment. No problems getting out of the box this time. Very rapid stop from the Penske guys. Interesting radio that I picked up on awards. He said that Palo was the guy on the same strategy as him as, as we go on board with Rossi now passing Palo, so he is marching forward. But the guy who's got the strategy right now is Rosenquist. He went a lap longer than O'Ward, and he's closing the gap. It's now down from, it started at eight seconds, now it's down to five. So the guy on the move right now is Rosenquist. Got to think that O'Ward might be struggling with some rear tire degradation like Dixon was. Rosenquist and his teammate, Marcus Erickson seemed to really have a handle over the run on keeping the rear tires underneath the car as Rossi continues to try to close the gap. Rosenquist is the next car up the road from him. Pato Award exits that final corner. He'll stay out for another lap. Down to 4.8 now, so Rosenquist is steadily clawing away at this gap. We know he can go a lap longer, maybe two laps longer now than Award, so that could be the advantage of doing that overcut. But there's the gap now. He was not in sight just a few laps ago, and that gap is closing. These guys have nice, clear track ahead. There's only one car uh, not too far ahead of Pato Award, and that's his teammate from Aaron McLaren SP. Just watching the hands of Rosenquist. Little oversteer there on the power out of turn three. See there, Colton Hurd on pit lane. And guys, how good has Colton Herta been this season? Hasn't got the win yet that he's looking for, but versus last year where it was like feast or famine for him on the track has been so consistent, and that was a consistent stop. Got the 88 out in good time. Dave, he's been so consistent that there are only two drivers in this field who have finished every race in the top ten. One is the championship leader, Scott Dixon. The other is Colton Herter. Talk to his dad this morning as we see Jack Harvey leaving. Brian Hurd, a Colton's dad, says he's very happy with how the season has gone. Very consistent. Last year was all over the place. But here we see Pagano, more front wing adjustment as he leaves after his stop. Oh, oh. Side by side there. Was that uh, Jack Harvey? Jack Harvey. So it beats the Meyer Shank Auto Nation Series XM car out. Meanwhile, at the front, in the last lap and a half, Rosenquist has taken a second and a half out of Pato Award's lead. Pressure is mounting on this young man because this guy here is driving frustrated. He should have been on the podium at Texas Motor Speedway five weeks ago to kick the season off. Last year, he almost got his maiden NTT IndyCar season series the win at Mount Ohio, but was denied Great job. by Keep a tenth up. of a second, no just under behind. a tenth of a second, by his mark. teammate Scott Dixon. He is ready to be an IndyCar winner. That day could be today. That last lap for Rosenquist was eight tenths quicker than award. Can he use too much fuel hinge and kind of lose that advantage of going an extra lap. No, I think he's good on fuel, and I just spoke with Barry Wanzer sitting on Felix Rosenquist's stand, and he said Felix is very happy with the car right now. He had a good car yesterday. They made a few small changes overnight, and it just really seems to be coming to them. Dave?
Alexander Rossi, good and gone out of there. Very nice stop for him. He was battling a little bit of an understeer in the 27 earlier. That seems to have taken care of, care of itself. Rossi's back on form, having one of his, his best race of the year so far. He, if this, we get a yellow, he will be a major factor. Going to have to deal with Santino Ferrucci here in the 18. who comes ripping down the front straightaway at speed on warm tires. Ferrucci will be looking to try to make something happen as they exit here and go down the long back straight to turn five. If he can hold them off once he gets to turn five, he should Overtake be able to keep three, them and then you'll have to stay off it after that. Get, him, get to three, get to uh, five first then. Like I said, he's got to get to turn five. If you get ahead by turn five, Hinch, you can normally hold, hold the guy off the rest of the lap. It gives you just enough corners, PT, to get the heat in those tires. By the time you're out of the carousel, those things are up to speed, and you can keep your momentum up down to Canada Corner. So it looks like he's done a good job here. Keeping Ferrucci behind, he should hold that place. I'll tell you what might factor later in the race between Pato O'Ward and Felix Rosenquist is the amount of seconds left in the bank for push-to-pass race leader is in, and he has been very conservative, Pato O'Ward, on pushes to pass. He's still got 137 of his 200 seconds left, while Ericsson doing the chasing, sorry, uh, Rosenquist doing the chasing, only has 66. We'll see how that plays out, Dave, as the leader is coming towards you. And Lee, this young man's story is so much more settled this year than it was last year. Contract issues and bouncing around between teams. He said, that was one of the most unsettling years I've ever had. But now with Aaron McLaren SP, a good run today and a solid year so far for Pato. Terrific stop for award. Everything was clean, seamless. That's what you want, especially when you're leading one of these races. We'll be looking for Erickson coming up the front straightaway. Sorry, Rosenquist. Rosenquist went one lap further, but it was a really four second lap. You've got to watch the overcut down. Rosenquist was closing the gap quick. Now he's got clean air on the front wing. He's really going to try to rip off a lap here and try to get the jump on award. But what a day it would be if, if award could win this. McLaren has really improved this year. Tough podiums in F1, a fifth place today. Can they win it, Lee? be amazing there's a couple of first potential first time winners either in Pato Award or Felix Rosenquist or is Marcus Ericsson in the window of opportunity pit, 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 pit. Pit, pit, pit this lap through the kick look how hard he's pushing he knows this is a chance with clean air to try to make up that gap to award in and out laps fast in and out laps are often the key to victory when you're playing the strategic game head-to-head -head with another driver. This has been a great drive today from Felix Rosenquist, the NTT data team, and Chip Ganassi Racing. Let's ride with him on in. All right, when you get here, wide open, straight in, stop at the sign. Felix Rosenquist pits from the lead. The pit crew is the one in charge of getting the stuff done quickly, but you said it, Lee, in laps and out laps are just as important in this pit sequence. That was a very, very fast in lap. Oh no, they dropped the car before the left front was on. They've had to raise the car back up. Oh, terrible, disaster for the 10 car. He's off and away as Ericsson, his teammate, comes in his box now. Outside front tire changer had an issue getting the nut off. It, then the tire was late coming off, and they dropped the car without the nut, and now you see the gap. He clawed it back to three seconds, and now it's going to be about eight or nine after this pit stop exchange again. It just feels like so far this season, we've seen so many issues like this on pit lane. There you saw the, the issue on the left front, and then they drop the car before the wheel nut is tight on the left front, have to reject the car in the air. That's two to three seconds, so costly in this over-under moment. Eight seconds, seven and a half second gap now. What a day it's been. What a weekend it has been here at Road America, but the start today, totally unexpected, chaotic in many ways, and some big hits. And we may just cap it off with a first time winner. Leading by almost eight seconds is 21-year-old Mexican Pato Award. His real name is Patricio Award, but prefers
chose to go by Pato, and he is doing a super job for Arrow McLaren SP. McLaren partnering with Rick Peterson, Sam Schmidt. First time McLaren's been permanently involved in IndyCar since the late 1970s. Really good collaboration, but they had a lot of moving parts, new personnel. They had to do a lot of work to bring this all together and make it work. And so far, so good. Two young drivers, 21-year-old Pato Award and 23-year-old Oliver Askew. That's the lead that Award has over Felix Rosenquist. That's the gap, first to second. 7.6 seconds now. And here are the comparative stops, boys. This is great. Side by side at the exact same moment watch the difference in pit stop time watch the fueler on the left all set gonna pull down and away there you see the air jack correction on Rosenquist I'm gonna call that about four seconds Paul that was the difference in the gap four seconds became eight seconds on track after that sequence and what's lost on pit lane Felix Rosenquist has to make up on the track the hard way that is tough We'll see if he can do it. We're into the second half of the Red Grand Prix here at Road America. Well, of course, we had to wait a while for the NTT IndyCar Series to fire up, but now we are in the full swing with back-to-back -back weekends of double headers. The season rolls on next weekend in Iowa, just outside of Des Moines in Newton, Iowa. And you'll see you at Friday at 9 Eastern on NBCSN. Home of the Indy 500 here on NBC Sports. Marcus Erickson easily passes Will Power. Not a problem there. That was for sixth place as the Chip Ganassi driver continues. A really strong run here at the Red Grand Prix at Road America. He's having a great race. The guys, look, he's just passed. Dixon, Power, Newgarden. A lot of championships and race wins right there, Townsend. Yeah, but Power, Dixon, they need to make crazy few miles, especially Will Power. He's really got to stretch this stint. Scott Dixon, same thing. They both pitted earlier than Erickson. So Erickson can burn the fuel. These two have to save. Newgarden's in reasonable shape. One lap to the good on fuel over Scott Dixon. Speaking yeah. of, Dick, of uh, Chip Ganassi racing drivers, Paul, Erickson's teammate, Felix Rosenquist, is not giving up no. because he was more than eight seconds behind and he's now trimmed it to 5.96 yeah. seconds. The he is not stopping. Last couple laps, he's been turning it on. That last lap was 148.3 to awards 149.2. So over one second on that lap. So it seems to me, Townsend, oh, that yeah. late in the run, his tires are, are just seem to hang on a little bit better than O'Ward, but that bad pit stop gave O'Ward the big gap again that Rosenquist has had to claw back. But now 5.8 seconds. Rosenquist, you're right, Paul. He'll be at the gearbox at Pato O'Ward in about another probably 10 laps at most. Right along board now, guys, with the leader pot to award up into turn six. Very, very difficult corner. The car gets very light as it crests the hill there, but not a lot of movement from the wheel. It really looks like Pato's car is on rails. He's managing it well to the fast turn seven, almost flat out in qualifying. Down the hill onto the brakes, one of three major brake zones here at Road America. And then he set up for one of the most beautiful corners in motorsports, the carousel here. There's a reason that this racetrack is a favorite among drivers. This fourth gear, fifth gear corner, absolute neck stretcher. The G's building as the speed builds. It's one of the most fun things you can do in an Indy car. Then into the kink. Used to be super treacherous. Still dangerous if you get it wrong, but easy flat in sixth gear. And then you snake your way down the back straight here into Canada corner. Don't hate the name on that one. Again, hard on the brakes, down to second gear. Very composed from Pato Award. No oversteer on the exit, not spinning his tires. He's trying to conserve. He knows that Rosenquist is up behind him through turn 13. Bit of a crest at the entrance there. Very easy to get wrong, as we saw Will Powell earlier. And then the long turn 14 onto this front straight. He's battling a little bit of understeer, it looks like. But all in all, this car is handling very well. On the long stint, at this point, you want a little bit of understeer, Paul, to take care of those rear tires. Yeah, you certainly don't want the thing snapping oversteer, especially in the carousel. Oh, and it gets a little bit snappy there. So these rear tires are starting to go away as he makes a bar adjustment right there for turn two. So. I have a feeling that these rear tires are just starting to go away, and now the gap gets down to 5.6 seconds. All right, it's time to go through the field with thanks to Honda. Dave Burns, why don't you kick us off? 
And Lee, when the team talks about what they like about this driver, he just showed it right there. Fast hands, and when he saved that race car, that's the kind of thing that he's available to do all the time, part of the talent with this young driver. Hinch? Felix Rosenquist running second right now. He is desperate for a strong result. He had a podium in the bag in Texas before a small mistake late in the race. He loves these road courses, but he loves the setup on his Chip Ganassi racing car right now. He is hunting down Pottle Award. Is today the day to turn things around for Alexander Rossi? Well, so far, so good. He's been in the hunt all day long. Strategy seems to be on par, and the handling of the 27 car is quite good. Different story for Santino Ferrucci. They've got to make something happen with the strategy as in fuel saving. You just saw him get passed by the 88 of Colton Herter right there, the green and white car. But Ferrucci's going to need to save, save, save to make it on one more stop. Meanwhile, Herter scooted through. There he is right there, the California kid who's 20 years old now and doing so well in IndyCar competition taking on after his father, Brian. Hitch. Marcus Erickson running in six right now. He is super happy with his Chip Ganassi racing team this year. He's coming into the season more prepared, more fit than ever. He really loves that he's a second season driver now, not seeing all these tracks for the first time, and it's showing here. He is absolutely on a charge. Scott Dixon is running next on the road in P7, obviously a little further back from his teammates who are both doing very well. It just shows the pace that these Chip Ganassi cars have. He's a three-time winner so far this season. Only got to win a race, but it doesn't look like it's falling away from the number nine guys just yet. This could be a point state for Scott Dixon. Powers next in line. This day did not start great for Will Power. Contact with multiple cars, a penalty to serve, a front wing to change. He's off strategy, he's saving fuel, but he's holding on to a top 10. He's in that top 10 right ahead of his teammate. You see him on his gearbox in the number one blue PPG paints car, Joseph Newgarden. He had a problem with qualifying. He started on the Firestone blacks like Alexander Rossi, but off strategy on tires, and it's slowly working as he's clawing his way into the top 10. You know, Hitch, the weather here is gorgeous, not the predicted heat that we thought we were going to have here. But yesterday, Takuma Sato had the uh, helmet hose fall off of his helmet, and he said it was super, super hot. So, and when that happens, you definitely have issues with your own cooling. As you see a pass right here, Newgarden goes through around the power. Sato will do the same way. And now Pelot looking for a way by Lee. Yeah, we're a little mystified as to what happened to Alex Pelot when he was running at the front. Something must have happened. I on a pit stop that is put him back there. Hey Lee, yeah. I checked with the team. They said the pit stop was fine. He has just lost overall grip. That according to the team and has put the 55 not in the running right now. He's in the running very early, but no longer the case. And the gap is less than five seconds between Pat O'Ward and Felix Rosenquist with just 19 laps to go. Rosenquist still has a chance. It could be a first win for one of two drivers. Or what about Alexander Rossi? What can he do? Racing towards the final pit stop here, not too far away. This IndyCar broadcast being brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. And you're riding with race leader Pato O'Ward, the Arrow on board, as he has been flying in his Arrow McLaren SP Chevrolet all day long from his very first IndyCar pole position. All right, let's take you back on what has happened if you've just turned on to NBC Sports. That was Will Power tagging Ryan Hunter Ray. Crunch, first lap, first turn. Not the way that he hoped for the day. Then Power was involved again with Graham Rahal. Graham Rahal gets the bump from Power, then loses it on the curve, gets into the side of Rosenquist, and massive impact for Graham Rahal. All left side gone. Will Power hit everything on the first lap, but the helicopter today, he goes sailing off to finish the first lap and mows down the sideboards and breaks his front wing and has to come in for repairs. Scoot ahead to lap 12. It was a very eventful day. Scott Dixon, uh, not the sharpest pit stop that we've seen from the Ganassi squad. That was pretty costly. Waiting for that right rear to go on. And then there was a close call there with Simon Pagano as well. Then this on lap 20. Pato Award just Pass. easing by Will Power for the overall lead. Smooth sailing. Power had to save fuel at that point. Still trying to save fuel. Rosenquist had an issue on his pit stop. They come off the air jacks early. The left front's not tight. Had to jack back up in the air. That lost him about four seconds to Pato Award on the gap. But Rosenquist has clawed that back.
Dave Santino Ferrucci is on pit road. What they're going to have to do is go 16 laps here to the end of the race to make this strategy work. He's cut the final two stints in half, so that was a good stop there. It looks like he's done well. The fuel safe. Here comes Will Power to his outside. A little bit of discussion here as he heads towards Hinch. Will Power looking to pit. Santino, same issue yesterday you had with Dalton Kelly getting out of the pits as Will Power comes in to make his final stop. He went really, had to make it stretch really long on that run to get to this window. Incredible job for Power. He did 80, 18 laps on that tank. So now he's good on fuel. If a yellow were to come now, Power would be sitting pretty. Great coaching from Ron Rizuski, the strategist Dave Faustino, his engineer, keeping him calm after a wild and frantic and chaotic start to this Rip Group Grand Prix here at Road America. With these guys that have pitted now, you're in the danger zone. A ward needs to either come in the next lap or he could risk, if a yellow comes out, having a problem with the cars going behind us. We go on board. With Colton Herta, Look for Marcus, Marcus, Erickson. Marcus Erickson on the charge. He's having a great race, goes around the outside, and he's marching forward into the top four right now. And that's the hardship you'll suffer from pitting a little early to start this race. Herta struggling a bit on tires, struggling to get some fuel mileage as well. Ro uh, Erickson, three laps to the good on Herta, meaning Erickson went three laps farther on the previous stop, so he's in great shape, but Paul, Makes me a little nervous here for a Ward and Rosenquist, even Erickson. You're in that danger zone like we talked about. Only 14 laps to go. I expect these guys to pit now. Andy's been complaining that his right rear tire is gone. So I heard it now, Dave is in. He can make a clean stop out of this one here, going for his marks. Perfect in front of his tire changers. One per tire. When the wheel nut comes off, it magnetically stays in the socket of the gun, then goes back on the, uh, the wheel nut, and it is on, and he's gone. Hinch. Back, Scott Dixon is in. They've had one good stop, one bad stop. A little problem getting the right rear off once again. Gets back on it right before fuel's done. The car, of course, forced into neutral. Oh, and he stalled. Another stall in pit lane. The long first gear that we're running here at Road America means you need a lot of revs. They've got it fired up much quicker than yesterday. Oh, as he stalled again. He stalled again, guys. It's in anti-stall mode now. He gets finally gets it running, gets it bump started. But that inside rear tire was an issue to on the both pit stops, and then not enough revs as he, as he dropped the clutch, and it just stalled and fell on its face. I think this has changed the points, but now 48-point lead. It was up over 60. I think the other issue for Dixon, when he came off the air jacks, the car was creeping, and I don't know if that was anxious Scott Dixon just trying to get going a little earlier, waiting on the fuel, but he didn't appear to have the brakes on there, and I wonder if that contributed. His Pato Award pits from the lead. Dixon now fell to 19th on that, that exchange as we go to Pato Award. Now, this needs to be a clean stop. Paul used reds going on to Pato Award's car. Very close to the wall here, but hits his marks well. A slight wing adjustment as well for Award. They wait on the fuel, and now he's got it here. He does not stall it. That was a great clean stop. In and out. Lots of reds as here comes Rossi. As he's now looking at his first podium of the podium of the year, so this is a, a big, big building block day for him. Sticker blocks for Rossi. Great clean stop from that Auto Nation crew. Down and away. But Felix Rosenquist, who has inherited the lead, has clear track ahead, and the reason he got as high as he is in this race is by staying out longer. Is he going to play the ultimate gamble here? when the guys he's fighting with for the win of this race have already pitted. I don't know, that last lap lead, 151 from Rosenquist, so that was a couple seconds slower than he was doing just about five laps ago. We'll watch on board here to see how long he's hanging on. Hey, here comes the blend. Herta goes by, Ferrucci, Alex Pelot exits pit lane. Rosenquist has to have a monster in lap. Pit the flap, pit, pit, pit. No mistakes on the pit stop. We've seen the Ganassi crew both cars having issues on the pit stop. A couple more corners here, Hitch, before he comes up the hill to make his final stop. Yeah, guys, this is everything. He did the overcut to success in the first round. He's gonna do it again here. That just means staying out a lap longer, using the what's left of those tires. His pace has been good, while Potable Ward is struggling on the colder tires, trying to get up to speed. And he, Otto needs to have a great out lap, and he needs to have a great in lap here. He, he looks really good, all sideways coming off the last And Hinch, the, the big advantage here as well is that pit lane is basically empty 
he can go and do what he wants with no distractions, not competing for uh, pitting drivers and exiting drivers. This is very clever from the NTT data crew at Chip Ganassi Racing. Is it going to pay off for them? Clear ins and clear outs are very important. On the last set, he came in the same time as his teammate Marcus Erickson. Maybe caught him a little bit uh, off guard, trying to get out of there. Hopefully, the A does not hold him up this time. We see them set up there. He's on the marks. He's going with sticker blacks. Pato Award went with the used reds. And it's a very clean stop. He is away in here and off. Going to meet right at the pit exit here, but that in lap was not stellar. Gonna as they're going to meet right here. I think Paddle's got the advantage. He's going to have another big gap as as Rosenquist has got to get up to speed. I think that gap's going to grow back to about six or seven seconds. That last lap was a 156 for Rosenquist. The one before was a 51. So not great in laps as Pato now gets the lead back. It just seems like that was the right call okay, pulling Pato Award in earlier. You see the gap now down to 4.2, but growing as Rosenquist needs to build temperature in his tires. Pato Award with 12 laps to go has a victory in sight. Successful drivers dine on victory. That's the juice that keeps them going. And these two guys have not won a motor race in two years. For Pato Award, it was Indy Lights. For Felix Rosenquist, it was Formula E. Who's going to win this one today? The IndyCar Series on NBC is brought to you by NTT, official sponsor and technology partner of the NTT IndyCar Series. By Fifth Third Bank, official partner of Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing, this is banking, a fifth third better. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance, only pay for what you need. Great to be back here at Road America, Elkhart Lake, that's one of the landmark spots, Seepkins. And if you go there any seven days of the week, you'll see David Hobbs. Our old mate from Formula One on NBC. Hobbo's been here actually the last couple of days driving the pace car for some vintage IndyCar racing and has been having a blast and it was great to catch up with David again and his family. They're doing well. This is their summer home. So Hobbo's still going strong, fellas. As we watch the leader, Patrick Ward, continue to make pace here at Road America, keep in mind who's behind this young driver and his young teammate, Oliver Askew. Robert Wickens is part of that story. Back in 2018, he had a horrific crash at Pocono and ended up paralyzed from the waist down. Many of you have watched his inspiring story on social media as he regains motion. In fact, recently showing how barbecuing can be good therapy, getting up from his chair and working whatever he's grilling that particular day on his barbecue grill. To have this kind of veteran leadership for Pato Award, who leads and is 21 years old, and Askew, who is 23, well, you can't ask for much more than that. And Wickens has been a big part of this team going forward this season guys guys right now it's a really a battle of tires award on reds rosenquist on blacks right now the last lap award was about a half a second slower than rosenquist but he could townsend just kind of be saving those tires make rosenquist drive his tail off to catch him catching is one thing getting by is another I'm really surprised that they went with that gamble on the used reds with the ward because the ward seemed to be comfortably able to hold off Rosenquist in the closing laps before they came to pit lane the last time. Right on board here with Rosenquist. Last lap, 48-6 for a ward, 48-3 for Rosenquist, a three-tenth advantage, but only catching up three-tenths of a second. It's going to take a long time to get there. Down to five seconds, that gap. First to second, here comes Rosenquist. A couple of podiums last year, lots of top tens in his rookie season in the NTT IndyCar Series. Can this be the day he catches his first victory? Every Yesterday had suffered a broken spark plug, T-Bell, which put an end to his day. Every so corner, you see that gap in the upper left. Just start to keep tickling downwards. 4.8 went up just a little bit there. So with 10 laps to go, Award really needs to be smooth and consistent on those used reds. They might have a little more grip outright, but I'd be concerned in the closing five or six laps that the handling really can go away from you. Absolutely, because as you get closer and you get closer to that car in front of you, then you start getting the arrow wash off the car in front, and that affects the handling. You lose the front grip, you lose some power down. So as 
pinch. Rosenquist gets closer, it's going to get more and more difficult for him to get really close. And driver Pato Award is very aware of that. In fact, two laps ago, guys, he offered to the team, I'm starting to take care of these rear tires. The team radioed back, we think that's a good plan. <laughs> Pato Award came into this fourth race of the year, eighth in the championship points. If they finish the way they are now in just eight laps time, he'll rocket to second behind Scott Dixon. An incredible leap, aided by two, the non-finishers of Graham Rahal and Ryan hunter Raven. They were taken out on the opening lap of this race. Gap is down to 4.5 seconds. Here we go. Rosenquist keeps chewing in to Award's lead. Rossi looking at a podium finish. We got a little bit of radio on Rossi. I think he's pretty happy, guys. Your 120, Ericsson. 8.6 behind now. He's catching about half a second to lap. It's going to be close to the end. So he's got to manage that gap, Townsend. But right now, this is a great, would be a great finishing position for him to build confidence yeah, off of. Four mile racetrack, the challenge for Rossi is fuel. He can't use as much fuel as Ericsson. Ericsson went one lap further on the last stop. So that's the fuel number that Rob Edwards is giving Rossi to make it to the end. And you can hear a little bit of the concern in Rob Edwards' voice. He knows that to hit that fuel number, the gap is going to shrink and it's going to be close at the finish line between those two drivers for the final podium spot. While he's one of the best in the business at making fuel mileage, he won the Indy 500 on a fuel mileage race, went longer than everybody there. And last year, he won this race by going longer and faster than everybody else on fuel. Meanwhile, that gap between Award and Rosenquist continues to shrink. And there is the black and blue NTT data car looming, hunting. Gap to Rosenquist, 4.3. Remember your tire safe technique, turn seven. Tire save technique, the black tires, the rears seem to go away a little bit faster than the reds. Oh, oh. says he's working on saving his tires. We had a reward. As now we got a little traffic that just came out of the pits in Connor Connor Daly. Ward. Connor Daly in the Aim High Air Force car exits turn three out of the pits. And these uh -oh. are the guys who came together yesterday. Uh-oh. These guys had a big wreck yesterday. Connor Daly holds position, not going to fight it too hard. Award gets by. Very polite move from Connor Daly. He could have made that a lot more difficult for the well, race leader. Here's the issue, Townsend, is now Connor Daly is a car in between himself and Rosenquist. So that's going to upset the airflow of Rosenquist's car even more now with two cars in front. Daly is one lap down. Barry Wands are giving the information. The Rosenquist. Be interesting to see if Daly tries to unlap himself. He's just come out of the pits on sticker reds with very few laps to go, probably pretty light on fuel as well. So he will definitely have a faster car. It'll be interesting to see if he tries to unlap himself. Yeah, guys, you heard the radio transmission from the team of Pato Awards saying, remember your tire save technique in turn seven. This is no doubt one of the areas where Robert Wilkins has been a huge help. He will have gone through data with these guys and showed them ways to adjust your steering input, adjust your throttle, to not only limit the wheel spin on the car, but also just adding too much yaw, too much slip angle, and sliding the back end of that car. That leaves the rubber on the tire and not on the racetrack, which is what he needs right now. Six, gray, six, gap to Rosenquist. 4.2. I like how calm his engineer is on the radio with him, just super calm, giving him all the information Copy. that he needs. <laughs> Award not sounding nearly as calm on the radio yeah. with the reply there. And I wonder if he's checking his mirrors because Connor Daly really seems to be hanging on quite easily with those fresh reds well, to the back of Award. The advantage is it, is it gives him a buffer. So, I mean, it's really up to Connor whether he decides if, er if Rosenquist catches him whether he just lets him go by but right now he's got a little buffer in between 3.9 seconds so it's not changing by a huge margin coming down a tenth or two here or there first career winners here at road america there's a really interesting list of drivers there headed by the inaugural race winner here in 1982 hector Ravake, who won his first and only indycar race he led his one and only lap in indycar he finished his one and only he finished his 
first IndyCar race all in one. So that was quite the weekend, and then he retired. Pato Award, if he wins today, he's not retiring. He's just at the beginning of what is a really exciting career, the 2018 Indy Lights champion. 3.8 seconds the margin now. Hi. This guy had the most crazy year last year, PT. He, he did seven races with Carlin in IndyCar. Then he got signed. He got signed by Red Bull. There may have been an opportunity to go to Formula One. So he was an official Red Bull driver. They said, we want you to come to Europe. We're going to put you in an F2 car. He did two races in F2. They said, well, maybe it didn't quite work out with that particular team. We're going to send you to a Japanese Super Formula, where he raced against Alex Pelot. And he did three races there for Team Mugen. So he went all over the world last year to finally come back to North America, settle down, sign a contract with Aaron McLaren SP and here he is on the verge just six laps away from his maiden IndyCar race win. Connor yeah. Daly is on the hunt he's a lap down but he would love to finish on the lead lap and he would oh. also like to give a hard time to this guy who he came together with yesterday in the race there was a huge accident for Connor Daly Award was able to get by unscathed and I'm sure Connor's thinking you know what Daly behind is not for position yeah, no need to fight and, and use up your tires with Connor Daly, so he's almost better off letting him go, but he doesn't want to give up that buffer. But back to Pato Award, last year he started the season as the darling of the media. He made crazy moves on track. He got snapped up to go to Europe to try to go to Formula One, and, and really it all just went bad for him all year. So he got a lifeline from Zach Brown to join this team, and so they, he's making it work. They just passed through the corner where the accident was yesterday. That's a ward on the inside. Gets together with Connor Daly, who had a huge shunt, dislocated his shoulder. A lot of pain overnight and recovered to come back. But I'll tell you the downside, Paul, of letting Connor Daly by is it's not as if Connor would then just drive away. Connor might be able well, or, or might not be able to be fast enough to pull away, which would then back Award up to, to Rosenquist and give Rosenquist a shot in the final few laps. I'm sure Connor's a little salty about what happened yesterday and is applying pressure and just thinking, well, you know what? Maybe I can put enough pressure on this guy and he'll make a mistake because he's sliding that car around and the gap now is down to three seconds. Look for Rosenquist, here he comes. This is far from over. Remember, Road America is four miles. They've still got 20 miles of driving Five right now left. Five laps to go. Get to Rosenquist, 3.5. Connor Daly's lap times, guys, on those fresh tires are so quick. They're faster than Felix Rosenquist, faster than Pato Award. There is an argument here for maybe letting Connor go and not putting himself in a position where he could have trouble. This is what we talked about Scott Dixon being so good at. Don't put yourself in a position to be caught up in somebody else's mistakes. Right now, Connor is very quick on those old, on those brand new red fire stops. Oh, another car. More traffic. That's more Dalton traffic. Pellet up ahead, who's circulating at about a second a lap slower than Pato Award. So now what does Award do? If he goes too slow, if he lets Connor by, Rosenquist he might allow Rosenquist to get into the draft on these long straightaways. Exactly. 2.7, it's as close as we've seen at the gap. Here we go, it is on. Decisions to make, he's gotta make quick work of Dalton Keller. Dalton, Dalton will obviously play fair, he's not on the pace. And if he can put another car in between himself and Rosenquist, this might also give him enough buffer. Dalton Kellett, though, on the lead lap. So, there's always, there's always hope all the way to the last lap that, hey, if a yellow comes out and I'm on the lead lap, I'm gonna get the stack back up and have a shot. Slid so wide. see what the 14 does. He slid wide in the carousel and Connor Daly is right there, had a good run off the corner. He'll take a look here. Rosen is oh. really going to catch up this lap. Now 2.5 seconds. And now at this point, Award is going to start to feel the turbulent air off the back of Dalton Kellett. And he's got Connor Daly breathing down his neck with those shark teeth from the uh, U.S. Air Force car. If you've just turned on, Connor Daly in the 20 car is not on the lead lap. He's not trying to pass Pat Award for position per se. He's got the They're run. just getting back on the lead lap, that's all. Oh. However, it's a distraction and Award now lets him by. And now it's a clean oh, fight boy. between first and second. Rosenquist has a clear view of that Aaron McLaren Chevrolet. The gap is going to close quick now. Now he's got turbulent air in front of him. He's got to get by Dalton Kellett. But Dalton Kellett's on, I think, is on fresh tires. Right now, his pace is pretty good. Last lap go. for Award 150. Last lap 
for Rosenquist, 149.2, a full second to left. The gap is 1.4 seconds. That cost award letting Connor Daly by with the lap traffic of Dalton Kellen. The race is on, four laps to go. Kellen moves over, smart move. Where's Rosenquist gonna catch him? He's not. Well done, Dalton Kellen. Now let me just throw this out here because Connor Daly is not driving away from Padua Ward. Is he now just upsetting the air as he goes off? Who said Connor Daly wants to drive away at this point? One second is all that separates Padua Ward and Felix Rosenquist. A Chevrolet versus a Honda. Aaron McLaren SP oh, versus Chip oh, Ganassi oh, Racing. Got way wide. Super wide, pushed way wide through the carousel. A lot of marbles out there too. He might be slow through the kink. And don't forget, Award started this stint on used tires. When they come around, there will be three laps to go. They've almost completed this lap, and that image of Felix Rosenquist is getting larger and larger. Short shifting out of the corner there a little bit, not trying to spin the tires up. Right now, he's got the advantage of this turbulent air for Rosenquist, so he's got to get closer to that gap, and he doesn't have the new tires like Connor Daly to, go to, to stay Rosenquist close. Who's got more one. push to pass town? Well, seconds. award with 40 seconds at the line. Rosenquist at 34 seconds left to push to pass. Little radio here from Pato Award. Pato, we need fuel 2.8, 2.8. You just got 2.7, very small save, but ah, give it to us, please. Another issue for Pato Award is that Rosenquist went one lap further on the last stop, so Rosenquist, more fuel available. Award still hits to, needs to hit a number. Talk about a young driver with a full agenda of needs here to close out the win. That is a tall order, Paul. Save fuel and save your lead. Gap now one point seven tenths of a second. Now it's below one second. He is right there. Oh, he almost dripped dips a wheel off on the entry of turn to turn six. What a chase, what a chase. And it hasn't just been one from Felix Rosenquist. He's had to do it twice after that pit stop error. And he brought it from an eight second lead down to this. And he's done that a couple of times. Equally, what a phenomenal day and drive from Pato Award. Whoever wins this one in two and a half laps time has truly earned it for their maiden NTT IndyCar Series win. Rosenquist is super brave. Remember last year in the race of Mid-Ohio with Scott Dixon, he was racing his teammate for the win, banging wheels with him. He's not afraid to mix it up. Oh, he Award gets way wide. wide, way wide. Award is hanging on at this point. The tires are shot. He needs to save fuel. And Rosenquist, watch this onboard. I mean, his balance is exceptional. You Great can. rear grip. You can run a little wide at Canada Corner, but you can't afford to run wide at, at the last corner right there. Or turns, forward, turns two laps to go, two, two to go. go. Gap to Rosenquist, 0.7. He has 26 seconds of overtake. At this point, Award doesn't need any gaps. He can see Rosenquist right in the mirrors. No nope. mistakes. Of their allocation of 200 seconds of push to pass, Award has 26 seconds left. Rosenquist, who we ride with, has 19. He's it's right as there. close as it's been. He's right there. He's going to get a good draft right now. Good exit from Award. Kept it nice and tidy right there. He hit his marks. Both on push to pass. He's closing. There the comes. gap is closing. Down to turn comes. five for the lead of the race. Award's going to be tough on the inside. Watch the crossover here. Watch oh. Erickson go inside. Oh. Rosenquist, oh. Bang. big bang. Climbing the hill to six. This is not going to work for Award here. Oh, it does it. Gets wide. That's this like, is just like yesterday. Whoa, and he gives him a little more room. Well done. Felix Rosenquist, but Award's not done. Pato coming back. Can't quite do it. Outside's the long way there. He's got to stay close here in the carousel. Don't lose the gap and go for the push to pass. But he's out there in the marbles a little bit. Can't keep it tucked down. It goes loose on him. And there goes Rosenquist. He saved those newer tires for right, when yeah, it take mattered. Take a drink of water. Take a drink of water. <laughs> This was like Simon Pagano chasing down Scott Dixon at Indianapolis last year. With one and a half laps to go, Rosenquist takes the lead. And with one and a half laps to go, Chip Ganassi is on his way to winning four of the first four. People thought it may have been Scott Dixon. 
winning all four and matching a record that Alex Zanardi did within Chip Ganassi Racing. But as Felix Rosenquist crests the hill, he'll see the white flag, four miles to go, four hey, white miles until they can flag, celebrate flag, his flag, bring it IndyCar win. In a way, you almost feel like Rosenquist can thank Connor Daly for being the unfortunate guinea pig yesterday. That crash with the award, it was exactly like yesterday, Paul, in terms of how they were positioned before that fast right-hander award backed out today. Absolutely, this, like I said at the, the opening of the show, we're seeing a changing of the guard. This new group of young drivers that have come into IndyCar, this is the future of IndyCar. Well, trends were broken today. As far as pole positions, every pole until today was won by a Team Penske driver. Pato Award changed that. Every race this Just year was won by mark. Scott Dixon. <laughs> Felix Rosenquist is within half a lap of changing that. What a weekend here at Road America. The first of two double-headers in two weekends. Iowa yeah, next weekend. 1.7, no pressure. Paul, oh, you talk about changing of the guard. Not only that at the front, I mean, just look down the list all the way to P7. You've got Erickson, Herta, Ferrucci, Pelot, all those young guns that have showed so much promise and technique and performance through testing in the early races, all realizing great results today. Yeah, the first old-time bet is really Sato in, in eighth, so Newgarden in ninth. So these, this is the new era of IndyCar, this young talent. It's an important weekend for Alexander Rossi, a rebound weekend. But that's a secondary story. The primary story is this guy here, Felix Rosenquist. He was denied a victory by his teammate Dixon at Mid-Ohio last year by less than one-tenth of one second. Nobody is going to deny Felix Rosenquist victory here. Rosenquist is an IndyCar race winner Congratulations, here in great winner. Congrats. Great job, everybody. Great job. Yeah. Thank you, guys. What a race. It's finally over. The wait, that is. Rosenquist has got so close. He thought he may have been in the hunt for a win at Texas this year when Dixon was so dominant. He crashed late in the race. The wait is over for Felix Rosenquist. Good job. And you're going to feel a little for Pato Award, who had driven such an amazing race. This is Chris Simmons, race engineer, on the Rosenquist box with Barry Wanzer and Chip Ganassi. The NTT data car has won at the hands of Felix Rosenquist. Superb drive from the 28-year-old Swede who says, I'm here. I can win, I've done it, and now I want to chase a championship. He had a rough start to the year, but here in the fourth round, Felix Rosenquist is a race winner, and this is how he went to the front. Forcefully, but cleanly, in a good scrap with young Pato Award. Rosenquist, he had to work for it, and Pato Award rightfully so made him work for it. But there was tense moments, it was just hard racing, good hard fighting, good hard racing, that got Rosenquist to win. Very narrow gap here through the fast kink. Rosenquist didn't want to be out on the marbles, but just had the advantage. Yeah, Rosenquist had the pace, but I really feel that if it, if it wasn't for those lapped cars and the turbulent air, Pato might have been able to hang on, but this guy, Chip Ganassi, four for four. The dominance continues. Chip's enjoying going to victory lane. And for Rosenquist, it's been a couple of years since he's won any form of motor race. It was back in Formula E that he was victorious. He has been putting in some serious training, some serious miles on the bicycle with his fellow Swede, uh, Swedish IndyCar friend and driver, Marcus Ericsson, and his teammate who finished back in fourth. And has finally cracked the code to winning an NTT IndyCar Series race. 
You know, Chip Ganassi's kind of hunted around for the next le next Scott Dixon the last several years, and as he hugs him, he may just have found him. Hitch. Felix Rosenquist, it was never a question of when, but if. Sorry, not a question of if, but when you're going to win your first NTT IndyCar Series victory. Tell me, how does it feel, bud? It's been a long time. I, we've been close so many times. Uh, I mean, this race was for my 10-car crew, the NTT Data crew, also Honda. You know, I'm really proud to be powered by HVD and Honda this year. Uh, been really good. Every race just hasn't had the luck, and has the races come together until now, and today we just went all for it. Super paced. Car was fantastic, and it's uh, four out of four for Ganassi now, which is huge. It's absolutely huge, but you really had to work for it. You were clawing that gap down to Pato Award. Every pit cycle, it seemed like he got that gap back out. Did you ever lose faith, or did you guys think that you could come back here and get that win? Uh, yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, it was a lot of hard-earned seconds there on track that we lost in the pit a couple of times, but uh, we had so much pace, and we kept closing in almost half a second every lap, and then when they said that uh, Pato was on the on the used red side, I, you know, you obviously you get a lot of faith cut that he might drop off in the end, and uh, that's what happened, so just stayed cool until now, and then went for really used all my push to pass in one lap and got him, so a really good fight with him there, a bit uh, squirrely out of uh, turn five there, but uh, good, good, good show and good fun. When it went south in that one pit stop, did you think that was it? No, I mean... Did we came out in clear air, and that, that was the key. You know, whenever whenever this guy gi gives me clear air, you know, we're, we're really fast. We showed that before, so, uh, yeah, amazing, amazing feeling. Well, congratulations, buddy. Welcome to the club. Awesome to see you finally in victory lane, and four out of four for Chip Ganassi Racing. What a start. And hence the driver who finishes second today did so much, and I think your team put it best on the cool down lap. They asked a lot of you, Pato. How would you describe those final laps? Yeah, man, it was it was really tough. Uh, you know, the Ganassi cars and obviously Felix was behind me had a lot, a lot of pace. Um, you know, I think we did a really good job managing the whole race, but towards the end, whenever uh, we got into a mix with, with some lap cars uh, in some dirty air, that really hurt us. And um, you know. I gave it every single little bit that I had, and I was pushing, 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 but I just couldn't keep feels behind me. But I really want to thank Aaron McLaren SP, Team Chevy. Um, you know, the car was was really, really good. I think we just we just missed that little extra on uh, keeping the rear tires under us. Um, but you know, we're here. We've got some some good points this weekend, and uh, and we're looking forward to Iowa. You know, we we, we 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 like running up front, and I think we showed that we we have everything to do it. So. Um, I'm excited for the rest of the season. How do you mention the lap traffic? One of those drivers was Connor Daly. Yeah. Did you try to push aside in your brain what happened yesterday to get that out of your head? Uh, not really. I mean, honestly, I think it was a racing incident yesterday. Um, I think it would have been a different situation if I was overtaking him, him there, but I was defending. So, um, you know, I think anybody's going to say whatever they think, but, um, you know, there was no action taken against me for a reason. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I thank him for respecting me and, and, and everything, you know, whenever I was leading. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's racing, you know, things will happen. But I think today we, we executed. Um, I'm ecstatic. But, you know, whenever a second place is disappointing, you know it's a good day. Uh, we started on pole and we, you know, we led almost the whole thing. And we just, if the race was five last shorter, we would have been fine. But... Uh, we have something to work on, and um, and we're gonna we're gonna keep pushing hard. Working on it and working off of momentum, guys. What a day for Pato Award. Korea best finish, and congrats to not only Chip Ganassi Racing but Aaron McLaren SP, and also Alexander Rossi who got on the podium. Still more to come. Thanks. Man. Felix Rosenquist, 
a first time winner. That feeling he will never, ever forget. Yeah, he's been working so hard towards that and it's finally here. What a day that this 28 year old Swedish driver had. Look at this, he gets a huge hit from Graham Rahal. Bang! How did that car not get damaged? I do not know. Rahal, by the way, was okay. And then he had to fight his way through the field. And there were many magical moments. That's why we're saying it was the Children's Miracle Network moments, plural, of the race. And he becomes the first Swedish driver to win in IndyCar since Kenny Brack back in 2002, who also won for Chip Ganassi Racing. A nice little piece of history there, Dave. Lee, when Alexander Rossi and I were catching up about the season so far, he called it a comedy of unfortunate events, which I think was generous. Today, no laughing. You are on the podium, my friend. Is this the turnaround? Uh, it better be. Um, it's been, uh, we've, we've, we've talked a lot about how difficult it's been, but I think the, the one constant's been this 27 AutoNation and Dreddy Honda team. Um, there's never been a question of what we're doing, why we're doing it. It's just been problem solving and, and just keeping uh, our pedal our foot down on the pedal and um, just attacking as much as we can and we knew it would come good at one point we knew our race pace was all right so um, we'll take this it's it's not a win but it's a step in the right direction and um, it's what we needed to get the momentum going so going to Iowa uh, I think we have some of our mojo back at least a little bit and um, we'll just keep at it but it's been a hell of a start to the year for Honda winning every race this year so uh, we'll hopefully keep that trend going at the double header next weekend set us up for next week I mean you're not bad there and neither is Andretti Autosport yeah I mean it's not it's not been one of our best tracks um, but we're going to change that this year. There you, you go. Know, there's been a lot of things that uh, we thought were going to go well, and they didn't. So uh, we're going to flip the script in Iowa, and we're going to look there and hopefully qualify up front and um, be on the podium two more times. Alexander Rossi back in the picture and back where he wants to be toward the front. Hinch? Guys, Felix Rosenquist was not the only Swede with speed here at Road America today with Marcus Erickson coming home fourth in the sister Chip Ganassi racing car. Marcus up 12 spots, more than anyone in the race from 16th on the grid to fourth. That must be something you're pretty proud of. Yeah, I mean, it was a great race and uh, it felt like I made up for it uh, a bit. My mistake yesterday, you know, when we were on for a really good result there with P7 and I had my mistake with a couple of corners to go. So, yeah, I felt like the guys deserved a bit better yesterday. And I think we showed today, you know, a bit bad in qualifying. We should have been higher up there. But then in the race, we, we just had so much pace and so many good overtakes. And it was so much fun out there. And once again, you know, the Chip Ganassi Honda, uh, Husky chocolate car is just great, and then the Honda with the HPD power is just fantastic. So it was it was great to be out there today. It's always fun having a race like that when you can move up through the field. But tell me how it was physically. Obviously, the back-to-back -back races here, very tight schedule, not a lot of downtime. How are you feeling after that second race? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely quite tough because I think if it would have been like in the middle of the season, like a normal season, you're into it, you know, and you, you're used to the G-forces and the racing. But now. It's, it's been so long and then uh, you know you go in and start racing and straight away the double header almost and then it gets quite tough so yeah, it was hot out there but uh, yeah I felt good unfortunately you only have a few days to rest before another double header at Iowa next weekend Dave in fact Colton Herta told me this changeover from this double header to next was going to be something quite difficult but talk about today if you would uh, I don't know if Mr. Consistency we would have called you that last year but man another top five for you today yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to have a top five, don't get me wrong, but I really want to bring on some hardware. Uh, good to get some points back on Dixon, uh, second in the championship. Another solid day. Uh, another day where I feel like maybe we didn't have the most pace ultimately, but we got there in the end. So uh, really happy with the Capstone uh, car powered by Honda. It was fast, man, but uh, we just didn't get everything out of it today, which is frustrating, but we have two more in Iowa. All right, we'll see you next week. Again, heard it with a great day. Hinch. Santino Santino Ferrucci, not the day you wanted. Didn't quite start off exactly as planned. Tell us what happened on the start there. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm sorry to Jack. I accidentally got into him. Everybody was checking up with uh, Hunter Ray going across the track, and I, I couldn't stop fast enough. And uh, unfortunately, just when he spun, I had to avoid him as well, and I ended up going all off and around the track and dropped back to last. So not ideal. A lot of fuel saving from there. Other cars had incidents in the first lap that got penalized as well, but your penalty didn't come till after the green flag was thrown. Do we know why that was? Uh, I think that they were just trying to get the race back going again. You know, if any car. And a little technical glitch there as uh, Dale Coyne walking in the background. His two to drivers. the end. 
had a, uh, a decent run today, an eventful run, that's for sure. When we come back to Elkhart Lake, there's Scott Dixon, he'll be uh, congratulating Felix Rosenquist, his teammate and race winner. Not finished yet, still got more here at Road America. IndyCar has Iowa, and you can see it next weekend, yep. Twice for the same price. We're looking forward to it. So race one is on Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, and then Saturday, 8.30 p.m. as the season really rolls on. Like I said earlier in the broadcast, we had to wait quite a while, of course, because it's the nature of 2020 with COVID-19. But now, after a delay, IndyCar is back on a roll, and we're in getting into the meat of the season. That's a feeling that Felix Rosenquist has never had, being the winner in IndyCar. Well done again to the Swedish driver. Dave? Lee, we thought rookie Alex Pelot might have that feeling. He was on the podium yesterday. Not quite so today. Alex, it seemed like there was one run that just sort of took you down. What happened? Yeah, well, first of all, we had a great weekend. Um, the target for this weekend was to finish in the top 10 both races. We had a podium finish at P7 today, so it was great. Um, but yeah, when you see yourself P2 and following the first one, uh, the guy in leading in the first run, you always want to finish in the podium again. Um, but yeah, we had the problem on the second run, first run in the blacks. Um, we couldn't get the tires to work and I just struggled a lot through all the runs. So we lost like, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds in one run. So that puts us in a really bad track position. Um, but then, to be honest, I, I was happy that we, end, we, we ended up P11 and then we came back to 7. So, super happy, getting experience, um, getting to know how to work in IndyCar. Um, man, this, cha this championship is nice, but it's really tough. And we, we'll get there. We'll get there for sure. All right, Lee, no question. The Spaniard will be back after a good weekend here. Yeah, definitely. A podium and a top 7. It's fantastic as we take another look, a closer look at the results. And, you know, just in case you missed it with James' interview with Marcus Ericsson, he made up 12 positions on his starting spot, and he continues now. That's three top tens in a row for Ericsson. Yeah, terrific result. And once again, so many of these young drivers showing their strength here this weekend, frankly, at Road America. As we look down the list, Takuma Sato with a solid finish. But I think, strangely, Paul, no Penske's uh, in the top five. The best one, New Garden, in ninth. It was a rare off day for Team Penske and Chevrolet. Absolutely. A lot of Honda dominance there at the front. The only Chevy was Pato awarded on that last stint. He did have to save a little bit of fuel, and Rosenquist was going flat out. So maybe that was the advantage. For Hunter Ray and Bram Rahal, terrific starting positions, but it all ended early with that contact from Will Power. But as we look to the IndyCar Series point standings after four races, my eyes jump straight to Pato Award, right up into the fourth position in the championship. The lead for Dixon is still strong, but several other drivers starting to close in. Do you know what a chaotic day it was? 12 of the top 14 in the points changed positions. You saw that Rosenquist up 10 spots in the championship, so he's getting his season on track in spectacular fashion today chaotic race for Will Power today and also a chaotic season for Rossi. He comes home on the podium, so that's a good stepping stone for him for the rest of the year. That first race feeling. What's it like, Paul? That well, first it's, race it's, win it, feeling. It's paramount and it's taken Felix so long to get here. He's been he's been knocking on the door and made mistakes and had little things go wrong, pit stops, accidents. But now once you finally get the monkey off your back, I, I, I'm sure you're going to see more. And that he's pointing to Team McCain. That is a, uh, a tribute to the late John McCain, who was the president and CEO of NTT Data, who was a massive supporter, not only of Felix's, but anybody who's driven for Chip Ganassi Racing under the NTT Data banner. And so we're thinking of the McCain family. And uh, he was terrific to Felix and any of Chip's drivers 
who were sponsored by NTT Data. They'll be celebrating this young fellow's win today. Ganassi sweeps the first four races of the year. What will happen next week in Iowa? Can't wait to find out, but these guys need a rest, that's for sure. Coming up next here on NTT, it's the American Century Championship from Lake Tahoe. And again, the NTT IndyCar Series continues next weekend, starting Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern from Iowa Speedway, just outside Des Moines. Thanks so much for watching IndyCar Racing here on your home of motorsport, your home of the Indy 500, NBC Sports. See you next week. Thank you.